Oh, here we go. Good. Hello, Jimmy. Hi, Joe. What's going on, buddy? <laughs> Good to see you. Good to see you, What's too. What's happening? Well, we were just talking about the uh, the Air Force admitting that their pilots had seen UFOs, and you were telling me you interviewed one of those yes, pilots. Yes, I interviewed Commander Fravor, and he was saying that this... this Chocolate has been my favorite. Uh, <laughs> Come on. <laughs> it's with an R, Fravor. Fra oh, Fravor. Fravor. Okay. Um, he was... Talk, I mean, he was one of the guys that actually went to what? Is, what is the word they do when they scramble and go to try to figure out what the fuck something is? But they they monitored this thing. They saw it with their eyes. They saw it with their equipment. It was actively jamming the radar, whatever this thing was. It was shaped like a tic tac, and it moved so fast you couldn't track it with the human eye. They said it went from th I think they said some some impossible number like sixty thousand feet down to two hundred feet in less than a second, like whatever you could track. You know, a radar right. does a blip, blip, mm -hmm. blip, blip. They don't know how fast it actually went. They just know it, it went this insane distance in less than a second, less than a, a radar jump. Like and, it, and it would it would data had observed them in that area without his knowledge, like other. Air Force pilots had observed them mm -hmm. and then had, you know, brought it up to the top of the food chain, but it wasn't something that got distributed to everybody until he saw it. When he saw it, he was like, what in the fuck am I looking at here? And they're like, well, yeah, we've been seeing these things. And this thing with no active propulsion system that you could recognize, there was nothing around, right. no fire coming out of it, nothing around, and it would just, just disappear, just take off at an insane race of speed and actively jamming the radar. So when I covered this on my show, I said, now, I've heard reports that pilots see this stuff all the time, but they never confirmed it. And my question was, why now? Why would the Air Force be confirming that they saw UFOs now? Because, that, that, again, like there have been, been reports that pilots have seen this stuff forever. And I'm not saying it didn't happen. I'm saying, why are they admitting it happened now? And then, of course, you see in this last uh, defense budget, they put in money for a space force. Mm. I think the money for the Space Force, though, isn't that because China is able to... China, that's what they say. Yeah, whatever China I mean, whatever they can do to make sure we want to spend more money, that's what they'll do. Hey, we saw a UFO. Hey, China. Hey, look over there. We got to spend more that's money. that's what it is? That's why they're admitting <laughs> yes. it? But Fravor, I guarantee you, isn't in that. No, no, I guarantee he saw it. No, that. no. They're just now... But before, they would say that's not true. The, oh, the, the Air Force would go, we don't acknowledge that. And now they're going to acknowledge it. Right. You're probably right. There's probably something to that, that it's just about budgets. And that's... I, I just, I want to, I don't want to be that cynical when it comes to something like that. Really? That's cynical? Yeah. I want to think that. Come on, that's not cynical. That's no, two plus two. It is, you're right. But okay. it, it's also cynical that the only reason why they're telling us is because of budgets. Oh. It's both things. Yeah, okay. I, I, it is two plus, I mean, look, it's 100% is how they do it. If they need some sort of justification for expanding their reach or expanding their budget, they come up with some threat. Well, this is this, Joe. I, I, this is what I keep telling people, and no one <laughs> seems to think this is a big deal. But, uh, you know, the Democrats and the mainstream news have spent the last three years telling everybody that Trump is a Manchurian candidate, he's a traitor to our country, and he's and working under the behest of Vladimir Putin. And while they're impeaching him, they're voting to give him an extra $131 billion to go bomb anybody he wants. And if he's bombing at the behest of Vladimir Putin, why would you give him an extra $131 billion? Now, let me tell you how much $131 billion is, Joe. Please do. Uh, well, $20 billion would end homelessness. End homelessness. Yeah. So is that real though? That's that's the that's the we figure. We can get to that in a moment. But, but that let's just let's just say oh, let's it's twenty. Just, okay. Let's just say it's twenty billion a okay. year. A year, not just once. Right, but right. every year you'd have to spend twenty billion. Right. Okay. Guess what? They're spending an extra one hundred thirty-one billion since Trump took office. Every year going forward on bombs, one hundred thirty-one billion. You can so go, if everybody they just go to college. One hundred ten billion. We'd have no homeless people. <laughs> yes, if they took that money and put it towards it. Mm. That's a lot. So somebody told me the difference between a million and a billion. So I read this. So the, I don't know. Maybe you want to fact check, make sure I'm not full of shit again. But um, so like a million seconds would be like 11 days. But a billion seconds is like 33 years. Yeah. Something, something like, like that. that. I'm yeah. not sure if those, but it's close. Yeah. So that's a hundred and thirty one billion dollars could do a lot of good things. You know, we could half our military budget and still we'd still be spending more more than any other country. Now, why do you think that they would do that? Why do you think while they're impeaching him, they would also approve this incredible budget increase for military? Because 
they're owned right by the military industrial complex that's why because they you know the the defense secretary just came right from Raytheon right the guy before who was the secretary of state came right from uh Exxon i mean come on that that's the beauty of trump is like you don't have to figure it out <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's right, right there. Right. They asked him the other day about uh, you know his criticisms of how he's handling. He goes, you know, where where they said I didn't pull out of Syria and I did, but I left troops for the oil. They're just there to guard the oil, and it's like he just says it. Yeah. So, <laughs> which a proves he's the funniest president we've ever had. Oh, for sure. Oh, no doubt. No doubt. No doubt. I thought George Bush was funny. This guy, he's in- intentionally and unintentionally the funniest president yes. we've ever had. Like the other day, he was doing a signing. So in 2019 was the hundred centennial, the hundred year anniversary, the centennial anniversary of women getting the right to vote, women's suffrage. So he was signing a thing commemorating it, the hundred year. They're going to have a coin. And as he said, he goes, you know, I heard they've been working on getting this done for a long time. I wonder why it finally happened now. Well, because the centennial is now, dummy. You can't do it. <laughs> why didn't 100 years happen faster? <laughs> and he's sitting around going, well, we get stuff done. Huh? That's yeah. why it happened. And they're all looking at him like, okay, Mr. President. <laughs> but he straight faces it. It's hilarious. Do you think he's on speed? And somebody, oh, well. So when he did that one video with the drawer open, with the drawer open, it was actually a photo. It was a photo when he was eating that taco. Oh bowl. right, that's it. Like I love Hispanics. Remember that? It was after he said <laughs> some rude shit about Mexicans. Jesus. Christ. So he does this taco bowl thing, saying that we, Trump Tower is the best taco bowls. I love Hispanics. Yes, and the, the drawer was open, and you yeah. saw he had that stuff from England or whatever, yeah. right? The super fed, super powerful pseudo ephedrine, which is es- essentially a type of speed. Well, it's, I, I like him on speed better than the other guy. <laughs> I like the speedy, speedy Trump. He's entertaining. Well, th- sometimes it wears off, though, and you see him slurring his words, oh, and it gets he, really weird. He doesn't even try to fi- finish words sometimes. He tried, but he can't. Yeah, uh, well, yeah, you can see him have a hard time with words sometimes. What was the one word? Him and George Bush both. Oh, sovereignty. They both. <laughs> sovereign. sovereign. <laughs> well, there's both. that one. David Pakman put a video up. It showed all the different times that Trump has struggled to talk, but there's one that's really disturbing because it's obvious he's under some sort of sedative or he's coming down from some speed and he's barely staying awake while he's talking. It's like if you were calling, if you called me at three o'clock in the morning and I just worked 24 hours mm-hmm. in a row and you're like, hey man, what are you doing? Like, oh, fucking Jesus. <laughs> it's literally like really? that. But yet, yeah, you never seen it? No, I haven't seen it. No. Oh, see, see if you can find it because it's, it's really bonkers. Because when you, you hear him talk, you're like, oh my God. Like this, and th- there was no discussion of this. It's not like he came out later and said, "Hey, guys, I had a bad night last night. I, somebody slipped me a Mickey. It was a real issue." Well, his whole thing is he's a teetotaler, right? Trump that's does nonsense. Is it? Yeah, the, the pseudo ephedrine. Well, that now stuff. He's, but then it turns out he's doing you know pharmaceuticals. Yes. Yeah. yeah. He's doing what's legal. That's yeah. what it is. Yeah. You know, if you if you the doctor writes him a prescription, you know, there was this whole thing with uh, what was that? Um, there was a reporter that named the Dwayne Reed Pharmacy that he had gone to in New York to fill this prescription for a metabolic condition, which he said is like a, a bullshit Term. reason. It was like he took diet pills, and this, this diet pills were speed, speed, but it was prescribed by his doctor. But look, if you're a guy who wants to fucking get shit done all the time, yeah. you want to be on speed. I know Speed's people. The way to go. I know people who say they write songs on speed, like they like you know musicians. Slayer. I, I don't know Slayer, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> it seems like the kind of music you write on speed, like. Da, 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 da. Oh, okay. You know, uh, yeah, that's I, speed music. I don't know what the kids listen. Like Sarah to. McLaughlin on speed. Um, you imagine? She'd be like, "Fuck those puppies." Yeah. You know, I I <laughs> I went to one of those. Uh, what were they called? The, the women's Lollapalooza? What were they called? Lilith, Lilith Fair? Fair. I was dating a girl. Oh, no. And she took me. Oh, Jimmy. Oh, my God. She's just trying to drain you. Turns out I was going through a mentally imbalanced time. I didn't know. <laughs> <laughs> Turns out I was like, oh, I was. that was when I was going through a, a, a nervous breakdown. Yeah. <laughs> In the arms of me. <laughs> it's you great know, music to listen to right before you go to bed. It was that. Uh, no, but the, I do remember the. Um, what's that hard rocking woman who's really good? Middle. Uh, there's one that's really good. Chrissy. Chrissy Hines? Yeah. From The Pretenders? That's it. Yeah, she's a beast. That She was there that I'm like, oh, really? this is good. Oh, yeah. I was like, that's really good. 
Yeah. No, I always loved her. Yeah. She's awesome. I was like, why don't you just have her play more? Yeah, what the fuck is this? <laughs> I can't even remember who else was there. <sighs> Anytime you have an all woman's anything or an all man's anything for that matter, it's a mess. Like if you say, this is a men's conference, we're here for men's That's rights and men's issues. That's not good. Blah. That's not good. Yeah, no, you're, you're going to find a bunch of bitch ass men too. <laughs> you're not going to find any real men in an all men's getaway. Like, Let's get, get together and talk about our problems and they're yeah. all, they all stem from bitches. Yeah, these girls <laughs> won't fuck us. It's a horrible situation. Yeah. I don't know how. I don't know how women. I just feel sorry for women that I have to fuck men. I do too. Don't you? We're gross. No kidding. <laughs> no kidding. And do you ever just listen to the way guys talk to women trying yeah. to get laid? It's like, uh, oh my god! Especially dumb guys. That which is most guys. Most guys. Yeah. <laughs> most people. Most, yeah. Most men and women are dumb. <laughs> yes, it's a fact. Yeah. I would. I would. I'm close. I'm, I'm in the dumb. Uh, yeah, I'm I, pretty th dumb. There's gaps in my knowledge that I can't believe. Oh yeah, and well, neither of our, neither of us are gonna figure anything out, <laughs> right? <laughs> we're not we're not that guy that they're gonna call on. If there's a real issue. We need Jimmy Dore. No, but no. that's the, but that's see that's the thing, Joe. About my whole show is that someone as dumb as me can see through this yes, stuff. I yes. can pit I can put it together. Oh, we're going to admit that we have UFOs and now we're going to have a space bar. Okay, I, I can put that together. That's the whole thing. It's like, if I can do this, I know they can do this. They're just not doing it. I think the UFO thing is, uh, you know, I know you're probably right in terms of like one of the reasons why they released it. But I, I think there's also this... When you get a bunch of like really credible people like that Commander Fravor guy, when you get actual data like radar, you you actually can look at the video of the infrared infrared camera of them tracking that thing. There's enough of those now that people are like, well, what the fuck is going on? And if if you guys have all this money and all this equipment, is this is this something that the Chinese are doing or the Russians are doing, or is this something that you can't explain? And I think. We're in this area where there's so much information. People can get a hold of so many videos and so much stuff that they kind of have to start talking about it now. Okay. I, 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 you know, I, I see how they shut down conversations around the most innocuous of inquiries. So That's true, too. They, can, yeah. they shame pretty hard. Yeah. They, they, that, that's, pretty, that's true, too. But when you got a guy who's like a decorated pilot like Fravor, mm -hmm. and he's like, look, I'm, I don't have any other crazy stories in my past. Like mm -hmm. He's not a crazy guy. He's a right. pretty rock solid, general, all around American hero type guy. And he's like, "Look, I'll tell you what I fucking saw," and it's pretty crazy. But those pilots, though, they live a they live a crazy life, though, don't they? Well, they have to. I mean, they Sex at go Dawn, right? Faster yeah. than the speed of sound. Oh, Sex at Dawn with the uh, the book. The, yeah. yeah. Um. Look, Chris is a good friend of mine. <laughs> I, th I think there's some of the things that Chris looks at. Like Chris is kind of a freak. He he wants things to be a little on the freaky side. Okay. You know? But the idea about the pilots is that they all swap, sw they do wife swap swapping because they think they could die at any moment, and they, they the idea create is, this bond. Yes. Yeah. They want someone to so, love their wife as much as they do, or maybe they want to fuck their buddy's <laughs> wife, and they're all doing coke. Maybe that that it. could be it too. Maybe they're all on fucking meth. <laughs> they're all on Donald Trump's <laughs> diet pills. And they want to bag each other's wives. So you don't think that happened? Uh, probably sure happens. Oh, okay. Yeah, especially during wartime. Yeah. I mean, war, war, people shift. War is crazy. You know, the, the, the mind shifts. When you see bodies, when you've killed people, when in, you've made these rationalizations, and also you're very aware that someone's trying to do to you what you've done to people, and your entire existence is, you know, from dawn till dust, is eliminate the enemy. And this is it's a it's a mindset that people slide right into. It's my doctor, Doctor Sharp. Uh, that he, fucking guy. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> just, Doctor Sharp. <laughs> just kidding, Doctor Sharp. Doc, I'm just so, kidding. So Doctor Charles Sharp was. Uh, he's the guy. He's the greatest endocrinologist. Doctor Jar Charles Sharp. Glendale. That guy. He's in, He's in Pasadena. Oh, okay. I almost said Pasadena. Oh, if you would have said, I'd have freaked out. Fuck. Uh, I but like it, Glendale because it's funnier. Ah, uh, I always go Glendale. <laughs> I always go Glendale, <laughs> and then and then and I I go uh, Glendale, um, and then Torrance. Those Torrance the, is a good one too. Torrance is good. It's like why are you living there? <laughs> <laughs> what are you? What are you? What are you in a Pinto and Taurus? <laughs> anyway, so um, what was I talking about? You, Doctor Sharp. 
oh, in Pasadena. So he said he smoked pot in, when he was in Vietnam, because I told him I smoked pot, right, just to let him know everything that's happening with me chemically. And um, he said that, uh, he said, yeah, I did it. I said, you ever smoke? He goes, yeah, I did it once in Vietnam. He said they would have a, a helicopter circling the medical. He was a doctor, the medical. And so you could always hear it constantly searching for whatever, people coming to get us. And then all of a sudden I didn't hear it. And it had crashed, right? So I had to go help the guy. And he said, I just smoked pot. And as a doctor, you have to be able to disassociate from what you're doing. And he said, I couldn't. And he said, so when I came up on him and I could tell this guy was going to be crippled for the, and I couldn't, it, it would mess me up. He goes, so I never smoked pot again. Wow. And I could see, I, could you imagine like you're new to pot? You know how it makes you sense things extra, when, especially when you first start, yeah. you know how you just extra sense, and then you walk up on a scene like that, like, oh my God, oh. I, I couldn't imagine that. So that, yeah, I, I probably would stop smoking pot. If that yeah. To yeah me. That, I mean, that's uh, talking about bad trips. Bad. Bad trip. That's as bad as it gets. Yeah. Walk up on someone who just crashed in a helicopter in the middle of a war, and you, you're you're high as fuck, and you realize he's crippled. So let me ask you a question. When when you when I would travel out of the country, I would always think that oh, I get like a little cold flu thing every time I travel out of the country. Like I would get night sweats, and I would kind of get headaches, and I would feel a little fluey, you know. Mm. And then. Uh, I got this dental implant, and so I didn't. I, so I want, you know, they say don't smoke, or whatever. So I'm like going to be extra good. I didn't smoke for a whole week. I felt like I felt when I go to Europe. And so I'm you like, think you have a physical addiction? Yes, I was like, no way. Wow. Did you? I mean, that's why I wanted to ask. Does that ever happen to you when you travel outside the country? No, no. But some people do have that apparently. Yes, like night sweats. It's the worst. Night sweats. You wake up and you, you know, if, as soon as I take this cover off, it's going to be freezing. Really? Yeah, so, so I got to get up and change my t-shirt. I swear to sleep in a t-shirt and uh, and jeans. I don't even and, know uh, that. <laughs> <laughs> I like and, to be ready. And Timberlands. <laughs> I want to go. Now, do you sleep before? Do you smoke before you go to bed? Is that your move? Of course. Okay, so it helps you sleep. Oh yeah. Yeah. How about you? No. It doesn't help you sleep. No. 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 When I smoke pot, I'm awake. I start thinking about shit. I don't want to go to sleep. Oh, it depends what I smoke, right? So there's the thinky pot, and then there's the yeah, sleepy pot. Even the sleepy pot makes me... Sometimes. It, it gives me a bur burst, and but then, like, I smoke this stuff called GMO. Whoa. It is the best. Genetically modified organisms? Oh, I wonder if that's what it stands for. Yeah, exactly. They're trying to fuck with you. They're like, this is oh, some well, GMO shit, son. They are fucking with me. Well, they, It's working. You know, like they're gen gen genetically modifying the weed, for sure. <laughs> I was just Stuff in. We get today. I was just in. So I get this at my place over in Eagle Rock. So when I was in Portland last week, and it's legal. So I just walk into a pot store and I go, "Hey, I'm looking for an indica high THC." He goes, "How about GMO?" I go, "You're kidding!" <laughs> and it's my fucking Barrett. It was great. How high is it? It's got like twenty nine percent THC. What was that shit that Kevin Smith dropped off? Wasn't it forty two percent? How do you get something forty two percent? He's going hard. He's an all day guy. He's one of them all day guys. He starts off in the morning and just keeps going. Yeah. So that the problem with, like, I love to take a little puff in the morning with my coffee or what have you. But the problem is you're giving up your later night buzz because I can't get buzzed more than once or twice a day. That's it. Because of my tolerance. And then if I try to smoke more, I'll just get a headache. Mm. Do you ever get headaches? No, I don't get headaches from potty. You don't get any of these problems. <laughs> <laughs> <clears throat> I just get the the, oh, in the overstimulation. The I mean, you would call it paranoia, but I kind of welcome it sometimes because I think it's good to be uh, hyper aware of all these different things, and it makes you appreciate when you're not. You know, I think that 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 feeling that you get when you get high, when you're like, "Oh my god, like everything is fucking dangerous. The world is a dangerous place, and I'm gonna die someday for sure. Everyone around me is gonna die. I hope they don't die today." You know, like, it's like <laughs> I'm gonna be sixty. <laughs> <laughs> and the crazy thing is, like, these feelings for some reason aren't there, even though you know those things yeah. to be a fact. I know. Like, you know you're, like, a basically, like, a, a, you, we are all water balloons. <laughs> We're, like, water yes. balloons of blood with, like, sticks holding us together. We're so d doughy and fleshy and weak and vulnerable. And, you know, like that guy found, when he found that helicopter uh, had crashed, yeah. and you, that's, that's what happens to your body. Your body's a very vulnerable thing. It's not very tough. Even the toughest bodies, very vulnerable. Y yeah. yeah. Yeah, I know. I, I, I watch boxing. Mm. 
Yeah. See him go down. Oh yeah, toughest guys in the world. But it, you know what? I um, I always wondered what it, uh, I have, I've been knocked out. You've been knocked out. Yes. Oh okay. So it's not a big like when you get knocked out and you wake up, you don't know. You're like, did I just get knocked out? I never it been doesn't really completely hurt. Completely unconscious, but I, I I got TKO'd in a kickboxing bout. I got dropped, oh. and then I got st- I got hit with a bunch of other punches and the referee stopped it oh, okay. but that was more like my that was a weird that was the weirdest f- feeling uh, i had ever had up to that moment was like my legs just stopped working like bruh, they just shut off like this guy hit me with a left hook i was conscious but my legs just went whoop oh they that's when they stopped they that's when they go working. his legs aren't there you always heard them say that but like they go they literally go out they go woo did you and you fell work. oh yeah I fell. Oh. like they stopped working it's very strange, and it's like your your brain gets jostled around inside your head, and also when you get hit on the jaw, there's nerves behind your jaw, and when your bone of your jaw slams into those nerves, and your head gets mm-hmm. rattled, and the brain, all of it together, is like everything just goes, Bleh! what's happening here? You know, sometimes you get knocked unconscious. I didn't get knocked unconscious, but my shit just shut off. I, I, I'm always surprised when guys get knocked out, they don't piss themselves. I got Sometimes they do. They, when they do, they do a lot of times when you choke them out. Oh, really? Yeah, when you choke guys out, they piss themselves all the time. They shit themselves too if they have to shit. Really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. They just. They just so do you? Like before you go body. fight, do you try to make sure you don't have to take a shit? Yeah, sometimes guys do have to take a shit though. Like I've had guy like one time, Michael Chiesa, who's a top UFC fighter. He was <laughs> right before he was fighting. He looked over at me like he's like, as he got into the cage. He goes, "Dude," he goes, "I'm gonna shit myself." He goes, "I guarantee you, I'm gonna shit myself while this fight's going on." I'm like, "Fuck!" Why wouldn't he just go to the bathroom? Couldn't. <laughs> It was the way it worked out. Like, yeah. you know, they're calling, okay, you you're up. You feel it's coming, but you yeah, can't go right like, now. Oh, no. And then he just makes the rock up there, and then all of a sudden, blah, 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 like, diary. He's like, oh, my God. He wound up winning the fight. But did he, but did he shit? No, he didn't shit himself. Oh. I talked him out. He's like, I was swore <laughs> I was going to shit myself. I talked him out of it. He's a funny dude. No, I didn't talk about it. I don't think I said it. I talked about it. I don't him. think I said it, but I talked to him. I talked about it with him after the fight. He's like, no, I didn't shit myself. That would be funny. And we were you, laughing about it. If you could talk about it. It's like, I, I'm going to have diarrhea. Let me talk to you for a sec. <laughs> <laughs> if you heard this story. <laughs> well, if you do, you know, if you have diarrhea, it's like, it's one of those things, man. I've, I'm, I've been on this carnivore diet. Do you know what that is? No. I'm eating only meat for the entire month of January just to see what it's like. No vegetables, none, zero. I had an olive and I had one piece of chili mango. Actually, I had two pieces of chili mango. But uh, And that's so is it. this good for you? That's where it gets weird. It's a really good question. I don't know. Um, I don't even know how I feel about it. So what? where did you get the idea to do it? Everybody's doing it. It's oh, really? All the kids. All the crazy so kids. So I did the Atkins thing. I did that <laughs> yeah. like back in 2001 or something when I needed to lose whatever. I did that. And that that worked like it does work. It's very similar. It's oh, okay. very similar. In that, you know, you're just, you're eliminating carbs. And yeah. You, you get your body to go into ketosis. You're getting the bo- your body to burn ketosis. fat. Ketosis. That's yeah. my, yeah, Dr. But it's The thing about the carnivore diet, though, is I actually check my piss with a ketone strip, and it showed that I'm not in ketosis. So you pee on How the strip. How could you not be in ketosis? I don't know. I, I think it's because I'm eating so much meat that when you have too much protein, there's something called glucogenesis, I think it's called, where your body breaks the protein down and turns it into glucose. And so that fucks with your ketone levels, and that keeps you from going into ketosis. But it doesn't affect your energy level. My energy levels have been amazing. Like, all day long, I'm flat. I'm, I'm sound like, <clears throat> people always ask me, why do you always have, like, that cough? It's this goddamn coffee. This layered superfood coffee. It, it coats your throat. It's delicious. It's de- it is delicious. I, I love it. I, when you said, hey, do you, do you like turmeric and you want it in your coffee? I'm like, cut the... What the fuck? In my kids, head, I was thinking these goddamn the kids hippies. today with the hair and the clothes, <laughs> the new math, <laughs> and the fucking turmeric, turmeric and the, and the goddamn Come coffee. On. Come on, super. how good is it? It is amazing. It's amazing, but I drink too much of it, and I'm, I'm always like a little phlegmy because yeah. it's like in my throat. I'm not a big on American coffee, but this is fantastic. American coffee? Is it, is, how much of it is grown mm. in America? Mm. Is there any coffee grown in America? All I know is that when I go to Italy and or if I go to Hawaii and I have coffee, it's always better. No oh, matter where. Oh, Kona has the best coffee on earth. My favorite coffee comes from Kona. Yeah, there's something about Hawaiian the coffee. Volca- it's the volcanic soil. Is that what it is? Yeah, and that same thing in God, Italy. There's volcanic so soil, good. which is why their tomatoes taste better and their coffee oh. tastes better and everything tastes better. It's the volcanic soil. I'm pretty sure. I wonder what it does to pussy. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Any questions? <laughs> I'm gonna say. <laughs> 
I'm going to say <coughs> it makes them juicier. I bet, I bet, make, make right? Just like better. a piece of fruit or yeah. a tomato is juicier. Mm, yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. I was so, it's so funny you say that because I was just, for, out of nowhere, I started talking about on stage last about how I, you know, I hate the word vagina, but I like pussy. The vagina word is a weird word, right? Because, like, who's saying that other than a doctor? Right? No, you never, you never in the middle of sex and her, her woman goes, stick it in my vagina. <laughs> If she did, you'd go, wait, are you and sure? Go, oh. Are you, what are you doing? Are you, I'm you experimenting need to take a- with me? <laughs> <laughs> are you experimenting? Yeah, I don't think a woman wants to hear that. I mean, maybe they have like cute little names for it, nicknames. Oh, I had a, jo- oh, I had a joke where I would say, I would go, I, I get it. We were ex- experimenting the other night, my wife, and right in the middle of sex, I took it out and I stuck it in her vagina. Wow. <laughs> totally different. Fits like a glove. <laughs> <laughs> Why it's are like shock jokes China. fun? Shock they're sh- fun. They're fun. Shock jokes they're are fun. fun. They're fun. They're, they're always been fun for me. I don't like when people say they're cheap. Like, no, they're not cheap. They're different. It's a different thing. You know, yeah. there's, there's really clever intellectual jokes, and those are great, too. Right. But I love a good fucked up joke. Yeah. Especially because you think it's going to be something cleverer, yeah. and that it's just a no, bam, yeah. smash. Right in the face. Right in the face. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny to me. It is funny. Yeah, I, I'm a fan of all kinds of jokes. I, li- I like all kinds of comedy. I, and there's a while where, where like dirty comedy was like looked down upon as if it was easier. Well, the, it was, it was da- Andrew Dice Clay. Yeah. So when Andrew Dice Clay happened, so a lot of people started to um, ape him, right? Because he was very popular. This is going back in the early 90s. Yeah. I don't know if you were born yet. And, um <laughs> And so comedy clubs uh, started expanding, and they had more clubs than there were good comics. So then they, st- uh, they started to give free tickets away. And so they started to book, they wanted more generic acts that appealed to people who weren't necessarily comedy fans or whatever. So this is my theory about what happened. And so then they would say, keep it clean, because we don't want to offend anybody. It's mm. like, that's not what fucking... That's not what people are... Then that, and you know, that's why they all closed. And You know what my, my opinion on that is? I think... Bad comedy sucks, but bad, dirty comedy makes you angry. Yeah. That's what it is. Well, you know what's funny is I've noticed this. Like, you, If people watch a musician go up and play, like even an open mic or whatever, and he plays a song or two and you don't like him, you'll still applaud after he's done. But bit. if a comic goes up and he's not funny, it's like, what the fuck does what this the fuck guy did think you do he's to doing? Me? Yeah. <laughs> people get angry. Yes, they get angry because you, you have to listen to the whole thing. You yeah. can't even talk during it. <laughs> yes. It's awful. Yeah. So that it, it's... I always notice that. You could suck as a musician, people will still applaud. You suck as a comedian, like this fucking... You know why? Also because... That's not funny! If I go to see a musician, I will re- at least appreciate the fact this person can play a musical instrument, which I can't do. I have no musical talent at all. But I know how to talk. I can talk. Everybody can talk. And everybody, pretty much everybody, has said at least one thing funny at one point in time. So you know what it's like right. to say something and then it gets a laugh. You know you can do it. Mm-hmm. You know what they've done is just do it more and really put a lot of time into it and you know craft an act. But when that act's terrible, you start thinking I could fucking do that. Yes. Why am I listening to this idiot? Well, it was bad co- Yeah. So it was bad comics that made me think I could do comedy. Oh, for sure. Open mic night, right? Oh, no, I was watching it on TV. Oh, interesting. So I remember when I was in college, we got um comedy like a cable in our dorm room right and so i remember i was watching the show um i forget maybe it was that one on a and he doesn't matter you anyway mean the improv no it was that rosie o'donnell one whatever oh remember yeah. she hosted that one and then bobby i Collins. forgot about that yeah fridays or something like that i forget what it was called but um Stand Up Spotlight, maybe. Yeah, maybe. Oh, I that was know. on VH. Yeah, that was VH1. Oh, VH1 I think. was Stand Up Spotlight. Yeah. So anyway, whatever. So I'm watching and I see this comic go up and I'm. He does like two jokes. I beat him to the punchline on both of them. Right. I'm like, <laughs> he said what I thought he was going to say, and then the third one wasn't even funny. He had inverted the punchline, which I didn't know that's what he had did. But I go, he should have put that thing at the end. Mm. And then afterwards, I go, wait a minute, that guy. I'm funnier than that guy, and he's on TV. I think I could do this. Yeah. Right? Like, when I would go to clubs, I would go to Zany's in Chicago, and those guys would just be hilarious. And I'm like, I could be funny for five minutes at a party, but I can't fucking do that. Right. But I didn't realize they were how it went. You do an act, and you work, and you do the whole thing. And so that's why I was like, I can't do that. Those guys are special funny. And then I saw guys on TV suck. I'm like, well, I could do that. I might not be able to go to Zadie's, but I could go to TV. Well, there was a time during the 80s where there was so many spots and so few comics that some really mediocre comics got on television. Yeah. 
really like mundane nonsense bits. Yes. And they all had that kind of comedy timing. Yes, 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 yes. yes. We, well, you're from Chicago, too, which is a rough spot. Like, it's fucking cold there. Mm -hmm. People don't take any bullshit. It's a different kind of thing. Mm -hmm. You know, like, those are the kind of places that make great comics. Like, fucking cold. Like, Boston. Same shit. Yes. New York. Fuck, 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 fuck. You that cold and... You need a little misery and eh, a little edge. Hong Kong. Fuck you. And, and then, you need a... You, yes. It, there has to be a need for comedy. Yes. It's like, I, like I was, as I said, I was just in Hawaii. We did shows there. I'm like, man, these people are laid back. Yeah. <laughs> There's not a lot of great comics. There's a few good comics that come from Hawaii, but not a lot. Yeah. You, not a lot. It's not, <laughs> it's not... You gotta... It's hard to be upset. They have a lot of local humor. Like the, the comics from Hawaii, they I, I've seen some comics from Hawaii, they, and they talk about local stuff. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah, I, just like a cruise ship. Yeah, yeah sort kind of like that. Well, yeah, like the guys, the guys who are live there, they do their whole act as local. Yeah, and a lot of times they like a morning DJ guy yeah. too, or something yeah. like that. And they, That's this, got, think about it. That's a pretty great life. Pretty fucking great <laughs> fucking place great to live. Life. You're a comic and a yeah. DJ in Hawaii. Jesus, yeah. hey, you beat it. You did yeah, it. You really did. First yeah. time I went to Hawaii, I was in Maui. I was working uh, at the some stand up gig book through the ice house and uh I get off stage and this guy comes up and we're talking and I said, uh, oh, where are you from? He goes, I'm from Pittsburgh. I go, Really, what did you do there? He goes, I was uh I was a plumber. I go, What do you do here now? I go, he goes, I'm a plumber. I go, How do you make it from a plumber in Pittsburgh to Maui? He goes, Well one day I woke up and I realized I could be a plumber in Hawaii or I could be a plumber in Pittsburgh. <laughs> 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 I'm like, makes all the sense of the world. Makes all the sense of the world. Yeah. I, yeah. If I was a plumber, I'd move there. <laughs> yeah, I know a guy who teaches jujitsu there who used to uh, teach in, he actually gave me my first lesson ever in Los Angeles. And he, after a while, he was like, fuck this. What am I doing? And I could teach in Maui. You know, and the thing about like a place like Maui, there's enough people. Like you need everything. Like it's not like, like Lanai we were talking about earlier. Yeah. That's a weird spot. Mm-hmm. Because there's only 3,000 people on the whole island. It's like a, a good theater show. Like, you yeah. a, a good theater show, yeah. and those people empty out, and that's the whole, the whole civilization. Mm -hmm. And then there's people that fly in because it's a resort area. But it's... Uh, I was in Kauai one time, too, and it's similar. Like, a after I got off stage, I was like, hey, where can I go to get something to eat? They're like, there's no, there's no place to go. This you got to go in the ocean and catch it. <laughs> <laughs> here's a, here's that's a where spear. Laird lives. Who does? Laird. Laird Hamilton. He lives in Kauai. I don't know Laird Hamilton. That's the fucking coffee you're drinking, bro. Oh, this guy. We talked about him for about a half oh, hour earlier. I'm bad with names. <laughs> does that work? Is that a good enough excuse? I'm bad with names. <laughs> Laird Hamilton. He's married to Gabriella Reese. Oh, that's the guy. Giant Aquaman motherfucker. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Great coffee. <laughs> yeah, he makes killer coffee. Who thought to put turmeric? Kauai is uh, a spot that I need to get to. I've never been to that one. I've never been to that island. I've, been, I've only been to Honolulu very briefly during a layover. You know, I, mm -hmm. when, when I was actually the first time I was going on Lanai, we flew in uh, um, Honolulu first, and then you have to take like a puddle jumper to get to Lanai. Oh, yeah. But Lanai is like, there's nobody there, man. And you go on the beach, there's like fucking eight other families on the beach, and everybody's just like, <sighs> everybody's just chill. I never sleep better. <sighs> oh, my God. I never, I mean, when Relaxing. I was. Relaxing. I, I, when I was in Hawaii, I would go to bed at midnight and wake up at eight in the morning. I'd slip straight through. You I, feel I'm great. Like, this never happened. And you feel great ever. Yeah. I come back to LA. I'm immediately getting headaches. <laughs> immediately, I get fine. Like God damn it. So I go go get a drink and I, I order a mai tai. <laughs> Believe it or not, well, Ma Maui and Hawaii in general, I think they have some wonky weed laws. I don't think weed's legal there. No, no, it's not. It's it medical, is I think. That's hilarious. Yeah, medical. But, Life is my condition. <laughs> I know. I know what I need it for. Life. Yeah, um, but I have so I didn't. I have fans there, so they just give me some. Uh huh. Do yeah. you still do you still ever take pot from fans? Are you get no. afraid? Yes. Yeah, me too. Yes. Just you're asking for it. You are right. Yeah. Some, oh, I thought I'd give you a little extra taste. I put some acid on yeah. there for you. I don't need Look, that, right? My good friend Ari Shafir dosed Burt Kreischer when they were doing a podcast together. So that's real. That's real. I thought that was a joke. No, he gave him Molly, dropped it in his drink. <laughs> so <laughs> was there hard feelings over that oh yeah there was a real problem i thought was that it? was all a joke no there's no jokes with us we don't do jokes i mean i just saw it on twitter yeah that's real all that shit's real no yeah so they're not pals oh they're back oh okay the wife hates them still though Bert's wife's still very i could very I, upset i would have a hard time with that yeah i would i, I only it's a real did, issue 
Yeah, I don't. You know, st- doing something like that, you, that's not right. That's that's eh, like forcing. He knows. A- he knows it's not right. What's really interesting is uh, I was. We were just. We were all joking around about it. Like this is the only business where you can dose your friend. We all joke around about it, laugh about it more. Nothing happens, and he actually got a bump in his career. Like he started selling out places faster. And when he was going places, he'd already be doing shows, and people would yell out, "Dose me, Ari! Ah! Dose me!" So now he's known for dosing people. And before that, Ari used to do something, I should say allegedly, because this this thing, which may or may not have happened, is very illegal. But he would do uh, a play in places where weed was very illegal. He would play a game called Find the Edible. So he'd post it on Twitter. He'd give people hints. And he would leave some fucking nuclear edible like to some North Dakota guy who's going to find it, who probably doesn't get any real weed. Oof, and geez. he's going to get one of those stars of death. And uh, he got in trouble, I think, in Minnesota. Oh, Alle- again, really? Allegedly. Because I don't think they ever found any of the things he was talking about. So maybe it was all just a prank. Let's go with that. Those edibles, man. Oh, I, yeah. my, my brother had something one time. and He goes, Jimmy, be careful. It's, it's called the creeper. That's what they call it. <laughs> And I'm like, I go, I have a high tolerance. Don't worry. So I ate one. I'm like, nothing. So I did the, I did it. I had another one. Oh, no. And about 45 minutes later, we're at a campground talking to my parents, and all of a sudden, I can't remember how to breathe. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, oh, how do I? It's got to. And I, and I <laughs> how do I? <sighs> and I'm so scared. Mm. And I just go, I have to go make a phone call. <laughs> I'm at a campground. <laughs> I gotta make a phone call. <laughs> so I just go to my car and I'm just laying down. And the next thing I know, I hear my wife behind me go, Are you okay? I go, oh, I'm not good. <laughs> we have to go. She goes, right, Let's go say goodbye to your parents. I can't say goodbye. Let's just go. Get, oh, start driving. No. Oh, start driving. no. You just like, you couldn't deal with saying goodbye. Oh, my God. So, yeah, turns out there is some danger to that, that drug. Oh, well, there's danger with schizophrenia. There's a real danger with people having schizophrenic breaks when they take high doses of uh, edibles. Really? And even, and even smoking it. Yeah. Well, you were like you were talking about where you get the withdrawals. Yeah. I don't get the withdrawals, but there's a small percentage of people that do. There's a small percentage. Yeah. I, 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 so that must be like so. People are like, "Oh, aren't you going to quit?" Because like, no, if you know, if I if I stop stay drink, high. If I, <laughs> If I dropped drinking coffee when I went overseas, I would get headaches yeah. too, right? So it, there's a lot of things like that. Yeah, coffee is one thing that's addictive that we all just admit. It's just it, and we just accept it. Yeah, and we're addicted to it because it doesn't really change your state that much. Right, where you're like freaking out, like you never drink a cup of coffee. You're like, man, I can't get up. <laughs> you're never on the ground, tweaking. <laughs> But I know a couple people who have had legitimate schizophrenic breaks. No kidding. Yeah. You know a couple? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, legitimate ones. Legitimate ones. Where, like, something happened, and then so what is they schizo- were never the same again. What is schizophrenic? <laughs> <laughs> literally. literally. <laughs> yeah. Well, I've heard about that with <clears throat> acid, but I never heard about that with... Well, it's not that much difference. When you take a high-level dose of... It can get psychedelic. Of, edi- of edibles. Yeah. Yeah, I've it's had a, it's that. It's a different Where thing. you feel like you're tripping yeah. a little and, and you're experiencing the... God save me from the comments, but p- people get mad at me when I talk about this, but there's a thing that happens when you... Because I've talked about it so many times, and I know I'm a repetitive fuck, but when you eat marijuana, your body produces something called 11 hydroxymetabolite. It's four to five times more psychoactive than THC. So as it's processed by the liver, you get something that's not psychoactive in the smoked form. So when you smoke it, you get THC, but when you eat it, you get 11 hydroxy metabolite. Oh. It's much, much stronger. Much stronger than THC That's... and it's a totally different sensation. You know, like people talk about the body high. Like, yeah. You're like, oh. Like you feel it everywhere. Yeah, you really tweak out too. But, <clears throat> but about... small le- doses of that are wonderful. Like a little, like they have these, uh, Jumbo has these sprays. I don't have one with me here. I used to have one on the desk. But um, it's a THC spray. Just a couple of pumps. And really? It, yeah, it's like a breath spray. Couple of pumps, and it's like, God, you feel great. You feel wonderful. Really? Yeah. But if you take 12 pumps, I took 12 pumps once. <laughs> and I did a podcast with Sam Harris. Mm-hmm. In the in the middle of I, d- I took the pumps like 20 minutes before he got here. And then in the middle of the podcast, I'm like, holy shit. I don't know if I can. 
thank God Sam is like a super articulate guy. So I could just kind of like throw a, a question his way, and he would just exp- and while he's expanding and talking, I was pretending to listen, but really just trying to keep it together, trying to keep it together and 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 make sure that I try to sober myself up. I was like trying to force myself into a state of sobriety. I, I have a. <laughs> It was about a thousand milligrams. Uh, yeah, I, I have a hard enough time paying attention to conversations when I'm not. Yeah, when I'm just completely sober, I'll lose my train of thought. Me too. And I'm like, what are the? Or, or I'll Especially be inter- if I'm bored, right? Yeah, not even that. Even if I'm super interested, I'm interviewing someone, and all of a sudden I'm like, oh fuck, I'm not listening. I'm thinking about that thing. <laughs> And then they stop talking, and I'm like, "Ha!" Oh, ah! no. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you can't do that. That's the cardinal sin. Oh, it's the. W- <laughs> That's one thing I, I don't think I do. At least, at least I don't. I can't remember. I try to really lock in. Uh, it's uh, me too. But then I just my mind will just get. Oh, so I was in interviewing Tulsi, and so this we came to this important part of the conversation. It was about how she had switched or something about. Uh, her some policy she had. So I asked her about it, and every I know people are waiting. And I, th- there was a documentarian guy in there with her, and his phone went off at that moment. I asked the question, but it didn't go off like a ring. It went off like a scene from a movie. So now I'm li- I'm like, what is that? Who's talking? And then all of a sudden I'm like, what is going? And then after I realize that it's this guy's phone. And it's a scene from a movie. And then that. And, but but Tulsi's been talking this whole time. Oh no! So then I come back and then she stops. And I'm like, I don't know. What the fuck. <laughs> <laughs> she just said. <laughs> well, that's why you don't want someone else in the room while you're uh, having conversations. No, no doubt. I'm One time I distracted. was talking to a guy and his girlfriend was sitting right there and she just kept spinning in her chair uh, and playing with her phone. Spinning her chair and playing with her phone. And I'm trying to pay attention to him, but I'm just seeing this girl spinning yeah, in her chair and playing with her phone. And then, and then afterwards, I was like, no more. No more people in here. Because sometimes people try to come in here, and then you'll see them like hold their camera up to take a picture while the podcast is over. I'm like, hey, you're, you're fucking this thing up, man. This is a distraction. Yeah. Like, I don't do live ones. Do you, do, you do live ones. Live what? Live podcasts. Yeah. Live, That's live, a different thing, though, because you know you're going to be live. Yeah, this isn't? I mean, live in front of a group of humans. Oh, you mean with what you mean with an audience? Yeah, but this isn't oh. live either. Oh, so that so that's not live. We stopped doing them live too. It's oh, not live. This isn't live. No, there's a reason for that. Oh, that's good. Oh, why? Want to edit something out? No, because because <laughs> often I, the other day on my show. So like when we were in the green room, uh, me, Graham, and Ron Placone were going to do a show. So we'll say things funny to each other that you can't say in public. Mm-hmm. Like South Park. Right, right. And so we were saying it, and it's funny to us. And then I was on the show and with Ron, and we were talking about... I go, remember when... And I almost said it. <gasps> and I was like, oh, my God. <laughs> oh, my God. So you know that... You know. Yeah, I do How know. come South Park gets away with that? They're the best. Because first of all, it's cartoons. They don't even look remotely human. And they've been around for so long, they're grandfathered in. They go fucking hard. They're, they're <sighs> so important. See the one... With the Harley Harley Davidson motorcycle riders, where they call them all, I don't even know if I can say it. They could say it. You what? know what I'm talking about? They call them all the F word that I, ends in a T. No. Yes, no? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yes, yeah. Oh. yes, and and many more things like that. Good. It was it, they. They still play it on the, on TV. Like well, yes, how yes. come they can play it on TV? I can't say it. Well, do you remember a time? There was a time where they used to show those old Roadrunner cartoons. Yes, where they were hyper violent. Yeah, where they were blowing things up and hitting each other in the head with frying pans and yeah. shooting each other in the face, and it was okay pushing them because off a mountain was, because it was old. And so the new cartoons were all sanitized and nerfed up, but the old ones were still on. But you would watch the old ones go, oh, yeah, yeah, this is what it used to be like. Well, I watched some old Popeye the other day, and Bluto is basically a fucking rapist. rapist. Yes, thank you. Yes. A straight-up rapist just grabbing olive oil. Yeah. Like, <laughs> yeah. like <laughs> yes. big fat face with his crazy yeah. beard. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he's like, Wah! She's trying to fight him off, and Popeye's like, hey, let go of me, girl. Yeah. And he has to punch her and or punch him, yeah. and he fights with Bluto, and you know, it's... Bluto was a rapist. Yeah. He dragged her away. That's what that was. I mean, it's a fucking... It's like... A hundred years ago, right? It's basically a hundred years ago. Popeye was like 1930, so almost a hundred years ago. And humans were just living different back then. I think rape was probably really prevalent. So prevalent that you could joke around about it in a fucking cartoon. Yeah, and so... So you don't go live now because... Well, a bunch of channels started creating their own channels with my clips. 
And so this is what can happen. So if you have a channel, like, and then someone says, hey, I'm going to take all your clips. I'm going to take the interesting parts of your podcast. I'm going to make my own channel. Mm. Uh-huh. And then they can get like hundreds of thousands of subscribers with all of your content. Right. And then they can have whatever they want, put that on. So then they could use it as a white power fucking uh, YouTube channel. They have 500,000 subscribers. They could use it as a uh, men's rights channel. They can use it as, uh, you know, they could just ch- switch it over and say it's not about Jimmy Dore anymore. Now it's about Bill Burr. And they, they just use your content, which is not legal. And I was like, when they were doing it while we were doing the show. So while we were doing the show, they were making clips and then and uploading then, them as we were live. While you're still going. Yes. Yeah. So they're doing it in real time. So... Okay, I got it. So wow. we, we realized that those can be taken down, and then we started doing it ourselves, and then we realized like the only way to really stop them from doing it in real time is to do it, like film it, have the podcast filmed, and then have the clips cut up and then release it. Okay. Oh, okay. That's why. Okay. That's a big one. The other one was copyright. There's a real problem to- with copyright strikes. Like If you get three strikes, they fucking pull your channel. So did you ever get one? Pro- we've gotten them. We've gotten them before for shit that we show. We've gotten them for before for shit that we show in the corner of the screen, like the corner screen, like a photograph or a video or a little tiny thing in the corner of a screen. We had one where we got one from a fucking a guy took a film uh, from his f- uh, like it was like a cell phone of a, a satellite being launched, like the, and we were watching it, like watch the video. We got a copyright strike from that. Like just watching something that was really? on the internet. You can't do it. You can't. People own these things. The big one is nature videos. Those fucking nature videos when you see like a, a pack of yeah. hyenas try to take out a lion. If you play that, that's a copyright strike. They will get you for that. So I had a uh, copyright strike recently. A first one, only one we've ever had, right? That's a strike, not like, hey, we're going to demonetize. Totally different. I get that all the time. Yeah, that's all the time. But a strike is serious because they can take your channel down if you get two more of them. So, and when they do that, they have to put they put a stamp, you know, time stamp of what is the copywritten audio, right? And someone had put a copyright strike on at, at the end of every one of my videos. It goes do 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 do. And it's just from iTunes, right? It's not, it's non-royalty thing. It's just, it's like a, it's a chime. It's not even music. Right. So it's from GarageBand or something? Yes, it's from GarageBand. Right. Yeah. And so that's royalty free. And so somebody put a copyright strike on that. And I'm like, that's just someone messing with me. That's just so a hater. And some guy from like Canada who's now living in like uh, Thailand. We've I had a guy track him down Mm. and he's like, yeah, he has no obvious source of revenue. And oh, so he's trolling you. So uh, he's saying, the, the, the guy who investigated said he thinks it's intelligence. I'm like, oh. and so the reason why he took that claim on that was to show that he could take down every one of my videos because that chimes in every one of my videos. So for a while, I, so until that copyright strike got cleared up, I don't have a liaison. Uh, it took a while. And uh, so we took that chime out of all Jesus our videos. Jesus Christ. Yeah. Yeah, so that's, so I don't. Yeah, YouTube is weird, but it, they're dealing with managing an insane amount of content. Yeah, I don't know. Insane amount. They can't. And they always err on the side of the copyright holder. And I get why they do that. They do it automatically. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, we, we've gotten copyright hits for a screenshot. You know, when you see the video and there's like two heads and there's a small photograph mm-hmm. in the screenshot, mm-hmm. the screenshot was a photo that someone had took and they were claiming copyright on that photo. That was just on mm-hmm. the internet, and just because we had it in our screen, we had to, we had to change the photo. Really? Although, yeah, dude, it's fucking. I know, and it's weird because like for some people, like you have a podcast that's just audio, right? So yeah, I have an audio and video and video. Some mm-hmm. people don't. Some people only have the video, and then that video goes away. The, the, like the, you count on that YouTube monetization. Like there's a lot of people that did that. They counted on that YouTube money, and then YouTube demonetizes things just randomly like it doesn't make any like i've had a bunch of podcasts with tom papa that were demonetized I'm like that is the fucking, craziest thing yeah he is the like the nicest right most, he's like, not gonna offend yeah he's not offensive he's hilarious he's a sweetheart yeah like tom papa like how many did they demonetize a tom papa it was like two or three right to the point where papa got like really paranoid and he was thinking do you think someone at youtube doesn't like me there's something going on so he had, he wanted to contact some people at youtube and he went down this journey I remember he 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 had a he was hosting a pilot on I don't know like TBS or something and I got called in to like do like a run through of it or whatever 
And I remember I walked up to him and I go, hey, Tom, how do you get your own TV show? I really want to get one. <laughs> <laughs> and he goes, here's what you do. You have to overextend yourself. <laughs> Buy a house you can't afford. <laughs> so you get desperate. That's a which, good move. Which good, I good advice. For, yeah, and you got you got it. Mm, you got to yeah. make this happen. Could you imagine going back to regular TV now, though, with all the freedom that you have? No, I no, can't. No, right? I can't. I can't even imagine going to the radio. Right. Fuck I just got in radio. trouble. I just got in trouble. Right. So I have a show. It's on KPFK, and they're all nice people. But you can't. There's because they're a nonprofit. There's certain things you can't do. Like you can't over endorse. Like I had a candidate on. And you're not supposed to endorse. And I, I can't, I, 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 you can't go, hey, go to their website and donate. Mm -hmm. You can't say any of that stuff. So, yeah, it's just that. I'm like, oh, my so God. So how'd you get in trouble? What'd you do? So I did that. With who? Uh, so that guy, Jen Uger. Oh. He's running for that 25th. Uh, right. Dude, what the New York Times did to him was dirty. That was dirty. Who, I shouldn't say the New York Times. I should say that writer. Whoever that writer it is. It was the whole, but the, there was a... L.A. Times. See, it was an but unbelievable smear. But the smear New York Times one was the one where they yeah, tried to they say pretended. that he was that his that conversation with opposite. David Duke, where he was like, "Oh, of course you're not racist." It was as clear as day that he was joking. It's clear as day that he was being sarcastic. And so talking to David fucking Duke, yeah, the right. Grand Wizard of the KKK, and he's like, "Oh, you're not racist. Of course you're not racist." And then they take that and they put it in quotes. He said to David Duke, of course, of course you're, you're not, not racist. That's right. So that's that's like Mr. Smith goes to Washington that's shit. It's dirty. But that, I, I couldn't believe that was the New York Times. That hurt. That one hurt. Because I was like, <laughs> who the... Oh, I, you, you think it's funny? Yes. I'm like, the I can't New York Times is horrible. Oh, don't they say that. They are horrible. That's all I've got left. You don't, no, no. That's all I got You've got left. me, Joe. I got you. You've got me. you oh, got okay. Kyle Kalinske. Oh, I do. I do have Kyle. Right? I love Kyle. Yeah, yeah. I I, yeah. I saw you. I saw your interview with Kyle. I love Kyle. I heard the I was, shit you we, said. We were talking yesterday. His, I heard uh, the shit you said. Said good things about you. Oh, Always. did you? I didn't get that far in. Always, <laughs> I love you. I quit after you told him he was your favorite news show. Oh, you're you're my number two. <laughs> oh, Is thanks. That better? I'll take it. <laughs> I think he's the most reasonable of all the political commentators. But you're a comedian, right. And a political commentator. Right. I think you have a you have a dual. So purpose. I have a special. Yeah, category. well, you're funnier than him for sure. Oh, that's sweet. The, that's all I care about. He texted me yesterday. New York City was sixty eight degrees yes he was like what in the fuck is going on but then he's like i feel bad because i feel so happy because like seasonal <laughs> depression you know when it's sunny out and 68 degrees like yeah everything's great meanwhile the world's on fire yeah yeah oh whatever it's warm it is warm yeah no, he's great. There's, uh, there's, that's the beautiful thing about having corrupt and dishonest media is that it opens a door for honest media yeah. like you and independent guys like yourself, like Pac-Man, Kalinsky. It's, it's oh, easy. There's, there's it's quite easy, a few. It's easy to yeah. outdo them and, and MSNBC or CNN. Or but that, it really hurts hearing the, the freight from a guy I respect. The New York Times is horrible. That's always been what I trusted. I, I've always Me been, too. I, I know it was, uh, it was tough. It was tough when I when I realized that the uh, mainstream news media is just the mouthpiece for the establishment when it really matters. They're for every war. Yeah. They're for every war. They're repeaters. The, how do we get into Iraq? They got uh, Judith Miller to uncritically put the whatever Dick Cheney told her on the front page. That's why they all they have aluminum tubes. Front page of the New York Times, and then Dick Cheney. So Dick Cheney tells Judith Miller they they have aluminum tubes. She prints it on the front page of the New York Times. Dick Cheney then goes on Meet the Press and said, "Look, even the New York Times is reporting this. Oh God, that's how they do it." And then Judith Miller gets a, she gets an on air job on Fox News after that. She got rewarded. There's that, and then there's probably also access to candidates, access to top officials, it's access like journalism. If you don't if you don't give them what they want, they don't give you access. And this is sort of the game that they've always played. Right. That's exactly right. That that they have access and they they I've. I've experienced it. But what do you think? Why do you think they want to smear Jenk? I mean, like. Because I, they see him as an enemy of the Democratic Party because he, he wants to get money out of politics. Right. So that's his big thing. He has Wolf Pack, mm -hmm. and his whole thing is I don't take corporate money, and that Justice Democrats, they don't take corporate. So that's his whole thing. Right. It's about getting money out of, dem, uh, out of politics, and they want to keep money in politics. Because if you get money out of politics, their whole grift is over. Right. 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 The near Nancy, Nancy the Debbie Pelosi Washington is Chilton. not worth $100 million anymore. That's right. How does she get a hundred? How do you go bucks? from zero to a hundred million dollars as as you're in Congress? Well, you're a criminal. That's the, <laughs> that's what Truman said. Yeah, there's there's the only kind of people who get rich while in government are criminals. That's what Truman said. But there's like, isn't it some like there's forms of insider trading that are legal if you're uh, in in Congress that wouldn't be legal if you were uh, a regular citizen? 
I don't. I, don't, I, I know that they don't have the the rules that they should. Right. I know that there, there, there's rules that I, I shouldn't say a regular citizen, but if you were like working for a corporation, there's rules like they're allowed to get information and influence in terms of like how they invest. Oh, money right. It, that's not right. Right. That's it's, it's, that's extra information yes. that I could get. Exactly. Yeah. That's it's right. Extra, and then they're allowed to get that information, and then they're allowed to use it for their own personal profit. Like somehow or another, that's not been stomped out. Yeah. And that was someone. There was a video, and I don't know if it's accurate, where someone was explaining how Nancy Pelosi made all that money, and I was like, if I watch this fucking thing, I'm going to stay up all night. It was one of those where, like I can't watch any more of this. Yeah. Well, you have a hundred millionaire is the leader of the People's Party. Isn't well, that amazing? Not only that, like, what did you do? Did you sell hats? Like, where did you make that money? <laughs> what do you do? Do you make cars? So why do you think Nancy Pelosi impeached Trump but didn't impeach George <clears throat> Bush? I don't know. I'll tell you. Tell me. As Julian Assange revealed through WikiLeaks, uh, it was because Nancy Pelosi was told in 2002 that our government was torturing people. And she was a posi- person in a position of power. And the reason why the Republicans in George Bush administration did that was so now they've got Democrats complicit in their mm. crimes. And so she didn't tell anybody about it. She didn't launch an investigation. She didn't blow the whistle on this. So now she's complicit. So when George Bush, uh, uh, lo- when, so when the Republicans lose the House and she becomes leader and they go, you're going to impeach him, she goes, impeachment's off the table and nobody could figure it out. But nobody pushed her on it because we were just so glad we had a, a check on George Bush at mm. that time. Well, Julian Assange then reveals there's, a, there's the memo that shows that she was briefed in 2002 on their torture program, which makes her complicit in torture because she didn't do a goddamn thing about it. Did you see the interview that I did with Edward Snowden? Um, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I saw the first half. It was very interesting. Yeah, he, and dense. Nancy Pelosi came up. He, oh, yeah? It, it came up that she was one of the people that cleared and made it so that these cell phone companies have access to your data and can can spy on you and use it. The government can use cell phones and all all sorts of telecommunications, essentially video, your your uh, voicemail, emails, all that shit. All that all that shit can can get spied through, and there was a, it was very complicated. Like I don't I don't remember the exact thing that. The, 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 I don't remember ex- the exact scam. Like, but Pelosi was involved in it. There you go. I mean, they're all corrupt. That's the whole, that's the, that's kind of like the mission of my show is to remind people how we got Trump. People want to pretend that, uh, 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 corruption and lying started in January 2017. The Afghanistan papers just came out, Joe, that revealed that three administrations in a row lied completely 100% yeah. about Afghanistan from the day they took over to the day late left. Stuff like Donald Rumfeld saying, we don't even know who the bad guys are. We have no idea who they are. Well, why are we there? Yeah. Well, maybe because of the couple trillion dollars in rare earth minerals. I don't know. <laughs> maybe, you really think that? Maybe it's... <laughs> <laughs> We would go to war for minerals? Come on. That's we would, crazy. We would try to steal somebody's natural resources. Do we use upset at what a small story it was? That, I'm upset. What, that well, those papers came out and then no one really even talked about and it. And barely got it. N- nothing. So it, nothing. It, it justifies everything Tulsi Gabbard has been saying. These wars are a lie and bullshit and we got to get out of them. And that, 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 that she's not the one lying about them. The one that's been lying about them has been our government, including Barack Obama. Yeah. That's what the Afghanistan papers prove, that they've been li- we've been lied to Tell forever. Tell people what the papers say. So, people so, the, so what happened was they did a study, just like the Pentagon Papers, right? They do their own study that reveals that they're lying. So they interviewed 400 people that were like in the military, generals and in the military and contractors and all these kind of people to find out so they can know what, what would happen in Afghanistan. So they revealed all this. The people who they were interviewing revealed all this, that at the beginning of the war, they didn't know who the bad, they still don't know who's the bad guys, who were killing. They were lying about, they would lie that it's going well. And then their personal writings would be revealing that they didn't know what the hell they were doing. And so... It was. It's worse than you think, but we can still just keep sending four billion dollars a month there. Just keep sending it. Just keep sending it for what? No one knows. We're not leaving. Trump didn't take us out. It's gonna. It's he's up for re-election in a couple more months. We're still in Afghanistan. He didn't do what he said he was going to do. Nobody does. That's the problem, and that's why we got Trump in the first place. Why, because Barack Obama is, comes in as an anti-war guy, immediately gets rolled by the military-industrial complex, just like Trump did. I believe that I, I did believe that Trump, his druthers would get the hell out of the Middle East, right? But he doesn't really have any druthers. He's like, okay, I'm done doing that because they've rolled me hard enough. Three years of Russia Gate, I'm going to do what they want. 
Well, you saw the conversation that he had with one reporter. We talked about the military industrial complex and about how they want to go to war. Yes. I mean, Trump, like actively while in office, and this is like, like an Eisenhower thing, like as he's leaving, while in office is talking about the military. And it barely got mentioned. I know. And so I, so I think that's why the establishment wants to get rid of Trump, even though he does their bidding and gives them their trillion dollar tax cuts. Nobody asks how we're going to pay for it. He gives them, uh, he tries to go into Venezuela. He tried, he tried to do what, you know, he's doing Iran. He didn't come out. We didn't get out of Syria. We're not out of Afghanistan. He's sending more people back to Iraq. It's amazing what what's happened. The exact opposite of what he ran on is happening. Yeah. So um, why why do I uh, why do I think this happens? It's because just what Eisenhower said as he left. He says the we the undue influence of the military industrial complex. And Joe, imagine they just invented 131 billion dollars more worth of work for Raytheon and Boeing and Halliburton. Uh, how much money does the recording music business make a year? Um, 80 billion? I mean, how much does it? We've just invented a whole nother economy just since Trump got in, in, elected, 131 extra billion. I mean, just think what you could do with that. You could build 131 Yankee stadiums do you think, <laughs> every do you, year. Non cynically, do you think that a lot of this impeachment stuff and a lot of the scandal stuff is really a distraction for a lot of these things they're pushing through? Yes, it's a hundred percent distraction, and no, just is. like I told you, because if they really believed that he was doing all these things and he was, why would they keep giving him extra money to go bomb people at his own behest? They they it, it, they don't try to put handcuffs on him, so that's how you know they're full of shit. And the reason why they're coming at Trump in the way there's there's ways to so now they're starting to oppose him because of this Iran thing. So now you turn on CNN and Chris Cuomo goes, "Hey, why doesn't Congress do its job and take back the war powers to but they?" gave into the president under this AUM. So now, which is what I predicted would happen when Trump, the silver lining of a Trump presidency was all the shit that the Democrats and Republicans have been agreeing on, which is war, fracking, opening the Arctic to drilling, all that stuff, gassing immigrants at the board. Now we're all going to become aware of it. Well, the Democrats spent three years doing frickin' Russiagate, so they didn't ever oppose him on that stuff, and they let him keep doing it. And so now people are starting to become aware of what's happening. And so now Chris Cuomo is going, hey, why don't why don't we why doesn't congress do their job why are you letting crazy president trump well they just gave him 131 they they gave him his spying powers again through the patriot act they, this guy who's working for putin you're going to give him spying powers you fucking bullshitter they're all fucking bullshitters Arr. it's a weird scam yeah joe if you thought a guy was working for putin would you give him an extra $131 billion to go bomb anybody at his own pay? By the way, that's also intelligence. Is that a rhetorical question? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, it, so that's why, and, you know, people, people give me a hard time about supporting Tulsi, right? It's like, why are you support? I think it's really important to have an anti-war voice that has, uh, you know, speaks from experience. She's actually in the military right now. Uh, she actually uh, volunteered to go serve in their illegal wars, and then they smear her for it. It's kind of amazing. It, well, she's a weird one, right? Because she has so many characteristics that you would think that everyone who's a progressive would want as a president. She is uh, a, a, a veteran who twice served overseas, t twice deployed. She's been a veteran for a long time, long time congresswoman. Um, she's from Hawaii. She's, uh, I mean, I guess she's Hawaiian. You would say she's a woman of color. They say she's a woman of color. What color? She's like a, like she's a light beige? She's tanner than me. Is she? Well, she lives in Hawaii. That's why. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know about <laughs> these things. I'm white. I don't well, know. But it is really. I mean, the Hawaiian roots are essentially uh, Polynesian and South Pacific travelers who landed thousands of years ago on those islands. So, yeah. I mean, it is essentially a, a person of color. Either way, she's an, a very articulate, rock-solid woman, and they've tried to find a bunch of dirt on her, and they can't. And they, and they don't know what to do. And it's just funny to me that a lot of people who are supporting Elizabeth Warren were shitting on Tulsi as hard as they can. And of course, Elizabeth Warren shows her true colors. She she does a right wing sexist smear on Bernie Sanders. Is what's that happening? That was weird. This is such, what a crazy well, it thing was a to do. Fake smear. Like nobody's buying that. So it was it was her, the media, and the DNC got together and they're like, hey, let's do this because it was coordinated. This didn't come out of nowhere. Right. 
And the CNN, did you see that story? CNN wrote these two people who heard it from these other two people who we're not even going to name. And that's on CNN. That's CNN. That's how that's they do so it. so crazy. It's so crazy. Yes. They're digging their own grave, though. What they're, what they're doing is they're making themselves less and less relevant, and they're making guys like you and independent people that's right. more and more relevant and more and more trustworthy. And that's why they keep going to the catnip of, of Russiagate or yes. Trump's tweets yes. or whatever impeachment and this yeah. phone call to the thing. Yeah. And, uh, you know, look how, they, look how the media runs interference for the establishment. It's amazing, like, you know, to, to pretend that the Bidens aren't corrupt. I know, this hilarious. Whole, and to have people come on and go, that's a lie. That's no corruption. It's been looked into. There's no corruption that a guy has an $83,000 job on a board in a country his dad just helped overthrow? What are yeah. you, fucking crazy? That seems like it might be uh, a little corrupt. <laughs> well, the conversation where he tells the prosecutor that if, if, if he's not gone, he's, you don't get the billion dollars. Right. What do you know? They fired the guy. Right. Like You, you saw that video. So, yeah, I saw that video, and the, but their defense to that is they're saying, but that prosecutor was corrupt, and the next guy was even more tougher of an investigator. But that guy was investigating Barismo at the time. Yeah. And that guy did say later, that guy who got fired said, I got fired because I was investigating Burismo. He said that in a court document. So, uh, believe me, they're all, why, they're did, all why didn't they, why didn't they impeach Trump on the emoluments clause? Why didn't they do that? Why did they do it on this What's bullshit? The emoluments clause? So that's him benefiting off his position in government. It's because they all do it. Right. Why do you think? Because it would bring up everything. It would have to, right? That's right. Hey, Hillary Clinton, I mean, Chelsea Clinton just got a $9 million job for- uh, She deserves it. Oh, my God. She did. She did. She's the best. Uh, so, uh, and people are saying that. People are saying, what's wrong with a woman using her degree? She has three degrees. I wonder how she was afford, able to afford those three degrees. I wonder. She overcame all those obstacles, did she? She did. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. So it, they're all corrupt. That, that's that's then that's the story, and that's why we have and Donald Trump clinging to this system. That's why we don't have a functioning medical system or a functioning banking system because Barack Obama was paid off by the ba by the health insurance companies and the Wall Street banks. And that's not me saying that. That's Dylan Radigan, award winning Bloomberg reporter, says that. How how'd they pay him off? Uh well, he has a. I don't know if you noticed, he just bought a house at Martha's Vineyard from the guy who owns the Celtics. But he sells he hats has 40, or He has 49 acres. He's got a lot of money. 49, that's more acres than Kevin Hart. Whoa. <laughs> that's a lot of acres. That is a lot of acres. Yeah, that's that's the guy who's a community organizer. I guess it was a gated community organizer. <laughs> <laughs> But how do they pay him off? Like, Fucking how does that work? Comedy. How does that work? With, how does that work where it's legal? Like, how does how does the the president get paid when he, off? When he left when he left uh, the presidency, he goes windsurfing with Branson for a while, right? Mm -hmm. As we still don't have clean water in Flint, and and then uh, when he comes back in the public life, the first thing he does is he goes to make speeches for right. equ equity firms for a half a million a pop. Yeah, for twenty minute speech. What do you think that is? What do you think all this is? It's a bribe. Go what you it's an after the fact bribe. Yes. Yeah. But it's amazing that they still honor that. That they're they're so rock solid in their commitment to this corrupt system that even after the guy can't even help him anymore, he's out of office, they hook him up with these speaking jobs. Where right. He gets a half a million bucks a pop and well, then yeah. Whatever he wants to do. Yeah. But wasn't that a thing about the Clinton Foundation where uh Bill Clinton would the, the, he would make sure that he got speaking gigs along with the d weapons deals that yes. she was giving, yes. Yeah. This is correct. Yeah. yeah they're hundred. Everybody's, again. They're dirty. We didn't get Trump because the Democratic Party was doing their job. Right. The people were got desperate and decided to take a chance on a political novice game show host who they knew was a bullshitter. Everybody knows Trump's a bullshitter. They were like, good, go bullshit those people we hate. Yeah. And that's to see, and I, I've been imploring the Bernie campaign, which nobody listens to me, so it doesn't matter. Why don't they listen to you? Uh I, I, I don't know, maybe because I communicate in a caustic way, Joe. <laughs> 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 but I, I, I've been trying to. Uh, Bernie sh is uh, should be wiping the floor with these candidates. He, it shouldn't even be close, right? It, 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 and so I've been imploring them, Bernie, take the gloves off. Would you quit turning to Joe Biden and saying, my best friend, Joe Biden? Right. You got to do what Trump did. What Trump was running, he ran against the Republican Party. He ran against all those pukes that the people are sick and tired of, that the people have been let down by. These are the people who took you to Iraq. These are the people who took you to Libya. These are the people who are bankrupting you. These are the pe So that's what he did. And, and you know, Bernie gets up and he goes, Joe, my good friend, I just want to let you know you're corrupt. It's like, quit saying yeah, you're friends gonna, with these fucking guys you. who are corrupt.
Quit do just what he could land it. He should turn. And I've been begging. He, he, he came close in the last debate. He kind of do came, it in his voice. Tell what, what she said. Uh, I'm not good at impressions. You're pretty Mike good. McCray that, is the you, best. But you got right there. That was a pretty um, good one. Joe Biden. The reason why you can't understand how Medicare for all works is because you're corrupt and you're paid not to understand. And we're going to get rid of your brand of corruption when I'm president because you're the problem. Oh. oh my God! People would go crazy. The place would go fucking crazy. Then Elizabeth Warren would stand up for Joe Biden. That's and call right. him a sexist piece of That's shit. That's right. And everybody would see what the game is. And wasn't he like always in and support then of Elizabeth would, Biden? Yeah, Elizabeth Biden. Elizabeth Biden. <laughs> <laughs> Elizabeth Warren. Wasn't he always in support of her? Joe Biden. Yeah. No, not, no. 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 Bernie, Bernie Sanders. Yeah, they Bernie were, was always in support of. Yeah, Warren. Yeah. So Elizabeth Warren was like, hey. Bernie's policies are pretty popular. I'll pretend like they're mine. Yeah. Well, she and was then, a Republican. People forget up that. Up until she was 47 years old. Yeah. People right? forget that. Yeah. While, while Bernie was running around telling people that a woman could be president, yeah. she was still a Republican. Yes. FYI. Yeah. So it's amazing that, you know, it's like, is anybody going to vote for Elizabeth Warren over Bernie? It's like vaping. That's what I say. It's like, just smoke the real thing. Ah. There's a real thing. <laughs> right? Well, there's and, a lot of people out there that still just want a woman president. That's right. Yeah. And I understand, I understand that, but you, you, got, you can't let identity trump policy. You got to, you, you know, that's what identity politics. Well, we're going to have a woman who's not as good as a guy, or uh, we'll have a woman who's, who could be. It's like, no, you're supposed to marry them together. You know, you can't just, just because of her identity, that's not good. You know, Trump's going to torture her. If she makes it, if she becomes the nominee, she that folds, Pocahontas she shit, she's She couldn't never, handle Meghan McCain the other yeah. day on The View. Did you see that? How Meghan McCain twisted her into a pretzel to get her to say Soleimani was a terrorist? It was unbelievable the way she did. Did she, goes, she well, really? Why don't you say he is a terrorist, though? But, well, and then she does do it, that. Do it, but puff your cheeks out. <laughs> I'm not doing anything. No? <laughs> <laughs> what the, how do you get away with shit? What do you mean? What did I do? I don't know. I'm just saying. I, I said puff your cheeks out? Is that well, a problem? I don't... <laughs> Are we supposed to pretend she's not fat? Who? Who? Who are we talking about? Who are we talking about? Have you ever seen Tim Dillon do his version of uh, Meghan McCain? No. Oh, I'm going to get you something beautiful right now. Oh, really? I'm going to show you something uh, amazing. I, so there's this tape somebody put together of, uh, of Meghan McCain saying, my father. Have you seen that one where she says it over and yes, over and over? Yes. So I started, I was in Ventura, California. I was playing that clip like as a joke, like we we're all going right. to laugh. There was almost a fucking riot at my show. People yeah, made me stop playing it. They didn't what? want to see it. So, go, 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 go. At first, I thought they were like cheering because they cheer often at my show. Right. And then I'm, and I'm like, oh, no, they're screaming. Oh, Ventura is a sketchy spot. And I had to... <laughs> Ventura is like, why? You know, it's one of them Torrance places. Like, what are you, <laughs> yeah. what are you doing here? Watch this. Play it from the beginning and give me some volume. Okay, play it. Hit, watch this. This is Tim Dillon. Before my father died, I had a baby with him. <laughs> and we're going to, it will be raised in captivity. Ah. It will be raised privately to be the greatest politician that has ever lived. Ah. My name is Megan McCain, and I'm on a new show called The View. And ah. Donald Trump, that fucking riverboat casino captain, is talking shit about my father again. My father was tortured for a hundred years for this fucking country. And he came back and he started seven ah. wars because he's a gentleman. Fuck you, Trump. I'm going to wear my father's skin mask, and I'm going to primary Trump from the right. Come on the view, bitch. If you're that tough, come on the view. You want an Alexander Ocasio Cortez? You want this shit? You want to fuck these tits, Trump? You want to fuck these tits? No, you oh don't. You want to suck cock. But I won't fuck you because the only person I'll fuck is dirty. I'll fuck his corpse. I'll fuck daddy's corpse. That is... <laughs> He's the best. That that I impression. Had a baby. <laughs> the reason it kept it. The reason it kept it. <laughs> He's an animal. Wow, who is that? Tim Dillon. Oh, that's funny. Where's hilarious he from? comic. He's a New York guy. He's out here now. Oh, that's funny. Oh my He's god. He's hilarious. Don't you love being a comedian? Oh, I love it. I love I'm guys like him. That, oh. that to me is that's there's not a fucking filter to be found. Not a filter to be found. He's just... <laughs> he's got a hair job. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And he's gay, too. It's so he's a, got no. like... Yeah, yeah, yeah. So he's got like a, a free pass uh, to get wild. When you're gay, you can you get wish, away with more shit. I know, don't you? You can say you, more things. I wish I was gay. You can say crazy shit about women. Lots oh, he of went stuff. To, he went around as Jeffrey Epstein's temple. <laughs> <laughs> Ah! 
<laughs> he dressed up like Jeffrey Epstein's <laughs> temple. Which, by the way, that temple is fucking... St- how strange is that? That it's the same colors as the Israeli flag? Jesus Christ. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Oh, yeah. It looks like the Israeli flag. Okay. okay. Yeah. What? Who's that? Chuck Schumer walking away from him? <laughs> That's yeah. look like Chuck Schumer. Yeah. Oh, wow. That was funny. Thanks for playing Oh, that. he's hilarious. He does a lot of shit. He... He he works like he puts in a lot of time. He does a lot of things, a lot of content. He oh, puts yeah? out a lot of shit. Yeah, and he's a really funny comic too. I gotta do more comedy. So he, I, what's I, been going on? You haven't been doing a lot. I go out, but it's like I don't drive as far as I should. <laughs> oh, are you? I, uh, do you go to the store at all? I get it. You know what? I've never worked at the store. How dare you? I did actually send an email. I go, hey, I want to do my show down at the store in La Jolla. Yeah, because I I want to go down to San Diego again and do. I love La Jolla. Do you? Oh, that club is one of the greatest clubs in the world. It's like the store down there. That store down there is perfect. It's perfect. It's like a perfect comedy club. Oh, I sent an email. I didn't get it returned. <laughs> oh. oh. <laughs> Well, they're probably booked. They're so booked. Everything's yeah, booked. The, the, you know, the store has never been more popular. Right now, it's I, sold out every night. Yeah, I know. I, it's, yeah, I should start going there. I, I just got to get down. out of my ass. I just got to get off my... I go to... You know, I go to um, Flappers, which is in Burbank, mm-hmm. so it's real cl- close yeah. to my house. And I go up. I go up there a couple of times a week, and it feels good. And then I go to the Comedy Magic Club on the weekend. It's a good club. That's a great yeah. club. And then yeah. and, the, and I go to the Improv randomly. Yeah. And uh, so that's per- that's pretty much my... How often are you getting up a week? Just maybe, you know, two or three times. Oh, and, and, that's not too bad. That's not too bad. It's not good. Yeah, I'm doing three sets tonight. See, that's what I'm talking about. Yeah, you got to do a lot. A lot. Like Comedy is to, reps. It's yeah, all about reps. It's all about reps. It's like Alan Hay, my, my friend Alan Havey goes to New York, and now he, he works at that um, the Comedy Cellar. And they have mm-hmm. like three venues now, so yeah. he just has to make one call, and he gets three sets a night. Yep. I'm like, oh, if I could just go out. And he didn't have to travel far. It's like all real close. Mm-hmm. That's yeah. I, that's there's nothing better than doing three sets a night, right? Well, stand up is like I feel like it's like running. Like you want runners endurance. You want to be in shape. You got to mm-hmm. run. You yeah. have to run. And stand up, you have to do stand up. You do it. You get into it. You get the rhythm. You get the groove. You feel. You feel it. Once you start think overthinking it, yeah, and that happens. So if, you know, if you have too much of a break. Uh, mm-hmm. For me, anyway, I start to overthink it. Oh, of course. I start to get nervous. Yeah, of course. Do you get nervous? Oh, yeah, if you take time off. I was. You, take, you feel uncomfortable. That's the best way to describe it. It's not yeah. necessarily nervous because I know jokes, I know how to tell them. Right. But I don't feel comfortable. Right. Yeah. It's a totally, yes. I was in, um, so I was just in Portland this last weekend. Do you helium up there? No, I do the Alberta Rose Theater. And, uh, I I had to write a whole new show because we came back too soon, like six months ago. We were in Portland, so I had to write a whole new fucking show. And I was really sweating it. I didn't realize how how nervous I was, you know. Like I, uh, and so when I got on stage, like about thirty minutes in, it was going good, right? I got my appetite. (laughs) All of a sudden, I was hungry, and so I got a calzone and I had to eat it (laughs) on stage. (laughs) Yes. What? I couldn't. I was starving. I had another two hours to go. My show goes two and a half hours. And sometimes so you ate while you're on stage. So I'm, saying, I'm like, I have to get, yeah. So I just got a calzone. How did the good. people handle it? They all went and got calzones. They sold out. So you had a break? No, we just as I'm doing the show, I have, I had three people up on stage with me. I had. Are you in the calzone business? Are you the Nancy Pelosi of calzones? I have. Is that what's going on? You know, I have, I have some interests <laughs> in calzones. No, I don't I, know how you can do that. I, that's I, I've often looked. I'd be on stage and I look down at a chicken wing. I'm like, I could eat that fucking thing right now. Really? I get yeah. So as soon as my nervousness goes away, like I'll you get tr- hungry. Yeah, that's so weird. Yeah, while you're on stage, you get hungry. If I'm yeah, because my nervousness goes away. I don't know how <laughs> so many times I can that, say this. <laughs> no, I understand. So before that, because of the nervousness, you can't eat. Yeah. So you go on stage hungry. It's, yes, but you probably should be. Hungry. But I don't feel hungry when I go on stage. I just oh. feel like a knot or whatever. And then the nervousness goes away. Way, you're like, doing Ooh. well. Yeah. And then you're like, I gotta fucking eat something. Mm-hmm. You go on stage and you do two and a half hours. Yeah. Whoa. That's yeah. A lot of time. Well, it's not stand up. I mean, I have video. That's right. You're doing your show. Video. Okay. okay. Doing a video show. Yeah. Okay. So, but we write jokes for the videos and everything. It's not just guys doing a podcast. Right. That makes a little more sense that you want to eat in the middle of it. Yeah. A little more sense because, uh, like, if you're on stage doing your act. Oh yeah, you can't. I could, if I'm doing my act, that's why I say I'm often doing my act. I've looked like I would like to have a piece of that chicken. You can't do that. <laughs> like I could play a video that's going to be a minute, and I've got. Oh, so that's what you and do. Then we come back. 
Yeah. Mm. And you, you, do you worry about shit flying out of your mouth while you're talking? I do not worry about that. You should, Cause right? Because the people already like me. Oh, uh, okay. That's a good way of looking at it. Yeah. That it, you know, it, it's, it's such a freeing, such a, I don't have to yeah. convince anybody. or And that's the weird thing with my kind of comedy. Like, I, I like to go up in front of people who don't know me to surprise them in a, in a way. Like, watch, I'm going to, but I also have to get into it a little gentler. More yes. gently, is right. that a word? Yeah, more gently. Yeah. yeah, so I have to get into. I have to act like, hey, my brother said this, you know, or right. hey, why did uh, I'm too dumb? I don't get it, you know. Like, why are we? Why is the government against uh, workers' strikes, but they're for military strikes? Uh, you know, <laughs> as opposed like, to the way you would do it in front of your crowd. Yeah, yeah. In front of my crowd, I'm much more, you know, um, amped up and angry or what have you. That makes sense. Yeah. Yeah, it's a weird thing, right? There's a catch twenty two to that because, like, if you play to your people all the time. You can get soft because they'll laugh at yes. stuff just because they like you. That's right. And then a regular audience will be like, "What the what the fuck are you talking about?" Like, That's right. Uh, there's some people that I've seen where they do well, especially like some podcast folks. They have a crowd, and then the people will come to see them when they do their shows, and like, "Oh, they're just happy to see you," and you do well. But then you go do a show, a rando show mm -hmm. at the fucking improv, where there's like five other people. Especially that lab. That lab is hot death. At the improv. That, yeah. That little tiny room? It can be. It's set up all fucked up. The door is right next to your stage. You're on stage and you hear the door and see people walking in. The bar is enormous. It's way too big. It's like uh, if, if everyone in the room was a rabid alcoholic, maybe you could justify having a bar that big in a room that small. It doesn't make any like sense. That That's funny. That's terrible. Uh, you, you know, well, now that you mentioned it, I guess I noticed that stuff, but... They should light that room on fire. They should, really? They should take sage through that room and I clear it of ghosts and you know then light I, it on fire. I enjoyed it because there's no waitresses, right? Not that there's I don't not? like waitresses. You go but, get your but own there's, drinks? You go get, if you want a drink, you go to the bar. Oh, that's and so grosser. nobody walks around in front of you with this, so it's, there's no distractions. People just sit oh, there. Oh, you're anti-waitress. <laughs> you motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> You fucking asshole. <laughs> I get it. I get it. I get it. Jimmy's got a problem okay. with the yeah, women. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah you you like some male bartender. Ah. A rugged. You know, we just got done making fun of... Uh, Kyle, Kyle Kalinske got in trouble for uh, making fun of uh, Elizabeth Warren's dancing. He didn't get in trouble. That but Cory somebody, Booker guy went after you see him. That? Like that is nonsense, you virtual signaling dummy. That is so silly. It's, it, he it, made fun of everything. He made fun of Cory Booker's jokes, jokes dad jokes. Yeah. He made fun of the. Th that's it. But so if he makes fun of Elizabeth Warren, all of a sudden it's sexist. It's just. It's Did like you see hey, his quote. Like you see what he said. Like it was so clunky. Like I'm sorry, are you an 18 year old autistic college student who just gets to talk for the first time yeah yeah it was yeah. so clunky like, yeah how did you formulate this this sentence I, did you really feel this then and it, who do you think's gonna believe this yeah. like the this? people who are gonna believe this it, it, you they already like you the yeah. pe most of the people are gonna see right through this thing so it was just to me it's like uh you know, <clears throat> it's a schizophrenic message from people like that. Like yeah. Elizabeth Warren's defenders. It's like, well, women can women can do anything except take a joke. I or guess dance. Watch her <laughs> dance. Let's watch that video. Elizabeth Warren dancing. If you're not making fun of that, you're out of your fucking mind. If there's a thing to make fun of, why do white people think this is dancing? By the way, you ever notice that George Bush danced that's my like this? One move. And then then she does Doesn't this too. Ellen do that too. I think Ellen may be, may do that. I don't know. I mean, Elon Musk did it too. Did you see when Elon Musk no. was in China? Took his jacket off, threw it on the ground, Dumb. was dancing. He's having a good time. I guess that's okay. I Probably guess. had a couple not, of pops. Yeah, he's not running for anything. Exactly. Yeah, and so, everybody made fun of it. Nobody accused anybody of being sexist. Really? Yeah, the dancing was hilarious. We'll, we'll play that first. We'll play that second. Let's play the Elizabeth Warren one first. Because the Elizabeth Warren one is so fucking ridiculous. You're watching her dance and you're like, how, how dare you say I can't make fun of this? <laughs> How dare you? How dare you? Fine. Obviously, it's... And by the way, it's not like somebody put up a, ce uh, a cell phone video of her dancing at a wedding. Right, no right, one's going right. to get make... No one's... That's okay. You're, yeah. She's on stage yes. trying to get something from people, and she thinks this will get it for her. Yeah, here we go. Here she goes. So here she goes. Here she's up there. I don't know if you can play that music. So she decided... Yeah, we can't play that music. So uh, it's... Uh, Look at look at her look at her dancing. So this, she, first of all, she no, looks this like isn't she needs, it. This isn't it. No, there's no. It's one with Julian Castro is in the background. This is a different one. This yeah. is her. Oh, there she goes though. Oh no, she's doing yeah. it there too. Yeah. Oh no, that would. Oh no, she, she keeps so doing stiff. this. 
Same. She looks like her back is welded. Like it's all one <laughs> she's piece. She's doing all this like dancing everything moves. Is, everything is moving like this. Yes, you're right. Yeah. You're, well, she's a robot. She's, she's barely real. It's about being white. Mm. You but know? That's weird because I thought she was Native American. <laughs> well, that's what I, I said. Uh, you know, but, So it, obviously Bernie's lying about saying women can't win or Elizabeth Warren is lying about him saying that. And I'm not going to accuse a Native American of lying. I'm just not going to go there. Good for you. She is one one thousandth Native American, so uh, that's that's real. That's a real number. So it, may, it might be two thousand. She's seventy. The hot, sh- her moves shouldn't be like very elastic, right? There's a lot of seventy year olds mm, that are out there. Good it point. Up. Good point. Can, seventy. Can, she actually looks pretty good for seventy because Bernie looks like shit, right? Bernie's Bernie head still, is in the middle of his chest. <laughs> I've heard you say that before. It's like uh, it's like falling off. It like, is. If I was his friend, I'd be like, bro, you got to work on your posture. We got to get you uh, some spinal decompression. Get you to some yoga classes. You, you're gonna your head's gonna fall off. When you meet him, he's taller than you think, right? Yes, because his head's right stuff like here. Yeah, you meet him, you're like, oh, it's, I thought it's supposed I, to be up here. I thought for sure I was gonna here. be taller than him when I met him. <laughs> 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 you ever have that happen? I thought for sure I'm gonna be t- or, or uh, and he and he was he was way taller than me. Well, I'm five eight. I always assume I'm shorter than everybody before oh, okay. I meet him. Yeah, okay, pretty much. So uh, unless they're like a tiny person. I thought Chris Hedges was going to be 6'5 when I met him, and he's the same height. He's a normal guy? Yeah, he's normal, not tall. Have you met Chris Cuomo? Fredo? Fred, did you call him Fredo? <laughs> no, he he'll would wreck, throw, he'll wreck, he'll your wreck shit. my shit if I yeah, do he'll that. he'll wreck your shit and, and then throw, throw me down, down some stairs. <laughs> that was so revealing. That was, was so like, revealing. Who are you? Are you 16? <laughs> but you know that Fredo is the N-word. For, uh, oh, we've all said we've that. We've all said we've that. We've been saying that for years. You get feti- fettuccine L N word. That is so <laughs> fucking dumb <laughs> to say so that. Stupid. The idea that he thought that he could pass it off, and he knew they were filming him, right? Yes, so yes. He knew they, they, How do you not say, know? It's like call, calling saying that to an Italian American is like using the N word. Like, oh, <laughs> is it really? Guess what? Here's the thing about being Italian. There's no word for us. There's no word for us. You can call me a guinea. You can call me a grease ball. And it's like okay. It doesn't work. Right. There's no word. They don't work. They worked for my grandfather's day. I used to talk to my grandfather because you know he was an immigrant and he came over from Italy and he told me all the horrible shit kids in school would say to him, all the horrible shit people really? in the street. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Guineas back then were ta- they were they were talked to like trash immigrants. Like they were they wanted them to go home. They didn't want them there. And there was a lot of dispute between the Irish and the Italians. So the I- and yeah. Well, Italians about- were thought of the way a lot of racist people think of Mexicans. Like they're coming over here to take our oh, jobs. Yeah. Well, they're coming up, they're infesting our neighborhood with their smells and their food mm-hmm. and their, they want to talk their language. Like my grandparents always spoke Italian in the house. Did they, they smell? Always, they smell great. <laughs> it depends on what you like. I love Italian food, so it smelled yeah. great. But they always talked Italian. My grandmother and my grandfather always spoke Italian really? to each other. Yeah. They lived in an Italian neighborhood up until it changed. They lived in uh, Newark, New Jersey. Oh, okay. Which was all Italian. So it seems like every wave of immigrants becomes the new horrible yes. person. Right? Yes. So the, I'm, I grew up because I was Irish and they talk about how the no Irish need apply all that stuff yep. and that's yep. why they... Yeah. yeah. I mean, that's what... It's just there's waves of this, yes. right? And now the wave is, you know, Mexicans are the scapegoats. But... You know, there's that documentary they did a while back, uh, A Day with No Mexicans. Uh-huh. But, but it's true. Everything would fucking shut down, shut down. Shut down. Especially Los Angeles. No kidding. But most of the country, most of the country, I and mean, this is the dirty secret about the United States of America, is that we rely a lot of, in, I shouldn't say we, a lot of industry podcasts, it doesn't really rely on illegal no. immigrants, but a lot of industries rely on illegal immigrants. And it's, it's a fucked up situation to be in for them because they really don't have a path to be Become legal, even if they've been proven right. for decade after decade that they're a, a viable, contributing part of our cu- our culture. Because they got over here illegally, even if they came over here as a child, that we can't we can't let you stay. You know, um, and that's another thing. You know, the immigration uh, had they've been scapegoated since, as far as I can remember, Bill Clinton. Mm. So Bill Clinton, if you go back the C-SPAN videos of him saying Mexicans come in here taking our jobs and all that stuff, he was he did all that stuff. And Hillary Clinton, she bragged that she voted for a border wall, she, or a barrier. It was a fence in some places. She she bragged, used to brag about it. And so then Trump comes along, 
turns it up another notch, and they're like, this guy's a fuck. Right. Yeah. It's like, no, you guys. But, so I make this point. He just says and, it in a way that's. Yeah, like, it's very offensive, and yeah. it's wrong, right? When he, Of course it is. But what I'm saying is he's building off of a bunch of shit that's yes. offensive and wrong. Just like when they tweeted out those. So you find out, uh, uh, this is what I say, that, oh, he, he, he banned all the Muslims at the airport. Then you find out, why are they at the airport? Barack Obama's been bombing them for eight fucking years straight. He dropped 26,000 bombs. They ran out of bombs. Then you find out he's putting immigrants in cages. You find out about Barack Obama built those cages. Then you say find out that Trump is gassing immigrants at the border. And you find out Barack Obama also gassed immigrants at the border. And they should be honored they were gassed by the lesser of two evils. Mm. So there is the silver lining. And it's finally starting to come out because the, the Democrats have run this Russiagate to the... It's done. They did the Mueller report. It's over. He concluded there is no collusion. It's over. So now they moved on to impeachment. But now he's bombing. So they're finally starting to talk about the War Powers Act. There's finally talking, but nobody's talking about cutting the Pentagon budget. Did you hear? Do you hear that? I don't hear that. No. Do you think that the the main the, the main thing about impeachment is supposedly that he tried to get Ukraine to investigate his political opponent, right. Joe Biden? Right. That's the main thing. That's what he, they say. Take that out, and there's basically nothing. Right. And 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 people aren't really that upset that he tried. Half the country, for sure, aren't upset that he tried to investigate but Joe so Biden. But so many people are clinging to this as if this is a this impeach, impeachment makes sense because mm-hmm. they think that he's not presidential. That's it. Yeah. That, as, as Aaron Maté says, who is the only guy I know who won an award for his Russiagate coverage uh, because he debunked it, uh, like a good reporter is supposed to do, but he, he always makes the point that Trump is not uh, a suitable steward of imperialism. Mm. And they think he puts an ugly face on the shit we've been. This is what I. This is the, he, Trump puts an ugly face on the stuff we've been doing all along, mm. and so now people are going to be more aware of it. And we would have been more aware of it if the Democrats would have actually opposed him on substance instead of Russia Gate. He says things sometimes that you go, wow, "You are just allowed to write your own speech." Like when he, when he was talking about uh, Baghdadi, that he died like a dog, <laughs> yes. and you're like, "What?" You're allowed to say that he died like a dog, or how about the? This is the weird thing that he uses Twitter to threaten other countries, like when he was talking about Iran that if they respond, they we will respond in perhaps mm-hmm. a disproportionate manner. Mm-hmm. Like you're using Twitter mm-hmm. to threat. Like nobody ever thought that there was going to be this sort of a an, a venue for a, a, a president to just just have mouth diarrhea. Mm-hmm. And that's why they, I mean, I, I really believe that's a big reason why a lot of the establishment wants to get rid of him because he makes them look bad. Because yeah. they agree with his policies. The Democrats just gave him everything he wanted. They paid for his fucking border wall. They gave him expanded spying powers. They gave him an extra $131 billion to go bomb people. They helped fast track his judges. They fucking uh, also helped him deregulate Wall Street. What the fuck aren't they doing for him? And that's why we have Donald Trump. And that's why it's important that Bernie... Uh, gets in. That's why it's important that he overcomes their cheating. And I just want, Ber- you talk about schizophrenic, like Bernie has a schizophrenic strategy. Like people are upset that I critique his strategy. I want Bernie to be stronger. I want him to win. And I, I want him to, so like he, he'll come on and give a speech where he says, I'm running against the Democrat as establishment. And people go crazy, right? Because we know that's the problem. And then he'll do a video where he endorses the DNC. Like, hey, give us money. We got. He just did a video with all the Democratic candidates talking about unity. And you, the, every campaign had to pay $170,000 to the DNC to be included in that video. Why? Because the DNC is bankrupt. Why? Because no one's donating to it. And so they have to extort money out of their own candidates saying, if you don't give us $170,000 each to do this unity video, we won't have any money to help you once you win the nomination. So they all ponied up and they're all in it. And Bernie's in a unity video uh, where he's supposed to be speaking against the millionaires and billionaires. There's two billionaires in the fucking video. Tom Steyer and Bloomberg. We got to come together with billionaires to oppose. No, they are the fucking problem. Bloomberg (laughs) is a problem. He's not. He's the guy who instituted stop and frisk. He's the guy who says New York needs more billionaires. Those are the fucking guys who are the problem. And if Bernie would just get stop, you know, playing footsie with them in a sense, you know, and just bash them, I think it wouldn't even be close. It, they would. So he's got like Barack Obama. He's got to overwin, 
because they're going to cheat him. Mm. So he has to overwin, you know? And I tell you what, if he picked Tulsi Gabbard as his vice president, he would crush Donald Trump because there are a lot of right-wingers and there's a lot of independents. There's a lot of anti-war people who are upset with the Republican Party, a lot of independents, libertarians, and they like her because she's a, and all the things that you like about her. She's strong. Yeah. She doesn't fly off the hip and she's pr- proven herself as a patriot, all that stuff. What do you think they're doing? Who do you think they're leaning towards for the nominee? Do you think they want Warren? Oh, the establishment, yes. Yeah, they want oh, Warren. De- well, that's why the DNC, the media, and Elizabeth Warren's campaign coordinated on this latest sexist hit on Bernie Sanders. But it's not working. I don't think so. I think no, it's backfiring. It's It should backfire. It's just, it's amazing that the, the Pocahontas stuff that she's gotten as far as she has it is. with lying about being Native American and using it to get a job. And the way she lies about it. I mean, she's such a bad, again, she's also a bad liar. Like when, when Megan McCain can twist you with a pretzel, that's not good. You know, when you, she, she went on some po- po- podcast with these uh, black guys. I, I don't know, have you ever seen that video where she's being interviewed by three black guys? And they just In a tear, podcast? Yeah, they just tear her to shreds. Oh, is that Charlemagne? Is that on the, uh, the Breakfast Club? I think maybe, I don't know. You know Probably I'm, Charlemagne I'm out of touch. Sharp I don't know anything. As, Charlemagne sharp as fuck. I think he went after her for the whole Native American yeah. thing. And she was just basically saying, well, it's a family story yes. that we he always told. He nailed her. He nailed it. Was, yeah. It was easy. You know, it was like you it, you it talking is. to Barry Weiss. It, <laughs> it wasn't Barry oh, that. <laughs> About All Tulsi. you had to do was ask normal yeah. questions. Here it what is. does Tony mean? <laughs> Charlemagne the God rev- calls Elizabeth Warren the original Rachel Dolezal. That's that's right. <laughs> yes, that's right. Yes. That's what he did say. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. Yeah, that is a, that's a hilarious thing to say, the original Rachel the original. Dolezal. Well, she used it to get a job. I mean, she she really did, and she didn't give any of that money back. I mean, didn't she get a job at Harvard because of that? Where, 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 where she did she said, get a she job? She claimed she did it. She claimed she did it. But it was on her application. Yeah. She was Native American. There's a reason why. Yeah. And she's just saying it's because our family. But she was saying she's Native American. Like, that's the whole thing? You're 100% that? <laughs> I don't know what she was right? saying. I know it's it's really come back to bite her in the ass. I know. I bet she was. Not she enough. Shouldn't. Not enough. She's well, still bouncing she... around. That, like, that's a liar. Like, she's a, she's a person that makes up a past. She's created a fake past, and she did it back when there was no DNA test available. So you can get away with being Native American. It makes you look like you're, well, first of all, you're kind of cool, right? Everybody, like, you ever see that movie Vision Quest? No. Great movie. Uh, Matthew Modine. Oh, but yeah. his, his buddy is like a fake Indian. His buddy lied about being Native American. He had a mohawk and everything. He was playing up the Native American thing. Because people want to be Native American. It's a cool thing. Yeah. You know, they're, they're, they've thought to be more spiritual, yes. more deep and interesting, and, and it's certainly more oppressed. So if you say, that, if she says she's Native American, oh, look at this Native American woman who made it all the way to be president. It's exotic. <clears throat> yeah. Meanwhile, she's like, what, like one two thousandth Native American? Is that what it was? Some ridiculous, ridiculously small number. Right. Yeah. So she just, and then just when she got her DNA test, Trump said that she, if she was Native American, that he would give a, a million dollars to charity, or to give her a million dollars, something like that. And so she was like, "Well, time to pay up." Like, what? Did what? you look at no. the numbers? Yes, she did. Yes, she did. Joe, find first, that. I find, find that. everything you're saying right now <laughs> sexist. I hope you know that. Fuck yeah. Everything is. you're saying is sexist. Woo. It must be, right? I'm talking about a woman. Has what if people, you know what I, you know, you, you talk about how you feel bad about the New York Times not being yes. what you, because I know, I know that feeling. You want somebody to be, what, what are the other news people like at MSNBC and say, what do they think when they see Tucker Carlson kicking their ass doing war coverage? Isn't that fucking amazing? The Tucker Carlson thing was interesting, right? Isn't that it, amazing? Like, he seems at least partially independent like, like why like, is he allowed to tell the truth about yeah. war at fox news i don't fucking get that they're not allowed to tell the truth at, about war at cnn or msnbc well shepherd smith was allowed to tell the, the truth too but he was so, like, certain truths but he was um, again after a while he's like i gotta get the fuck out of he, here yeah again he there's lots of truths he didn't tell also so yeah. that's why i said that yeah. <laughs> did you see bombshell no, what is this? That's the movie with uh, the Roger Ailes movie. Oh, I started about... watching that. Oh, man, that guy, who's the actor the, from Australia? What's his name? Oh. Whoever the guy is. He's fantastic. In Bomb... But isn't that John Lithgow in Bombshell, though? Is I it think this... you're thinking of the Dick Cheney movie. I'm thinking of a series. There's a series about uh, Roger Ailes and Fox News. Oh. And, um... No, this is a movie. Oh, I didn't see This it. is a new Charlize Theron Oh, movie. really? Yeah, where she plays um, Megyn Kelly. Oh, really? Yeah. 
Yeah. So she she again playing someone Here less attractive. Um N I W R C is a nonprofit working to protect native women from violence. More than half of native women have experienced sexual violence and the majority of violent crimes against native Americans are perpetrated by non natives. Send them your one million dollar check, real Donald Trump. So she was saying that because she's Native American, she tested like a trace amount like it really it's probably like she blew a Native American guy in college. Well, what it is? By the way, it, real Donald Trump. I remember saying on seven five, you'd give me one million dollars for charity if I if choice of my DNA showed Native American ancestry. I remember, and here's the verdict: Warren tests. R- Warren reveals, reveals tests test confirming ancestry. What? Yeah, but it's such an insanely small amount. Look, oh God! I am one point six percent African. I am two hundred times more, more African, African than, than she, than she is. is Native American. That's real. Yeah. I, L-O-L. I, so. Imagine. I, I mean, I, I thought that when she said she got fired from teaching and then the video came out and said she quit, I thought yeah. that would be the end. That should be the end, too. I got called She's a sexist a for, 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 for talking about that. Oh, you are sexist. Though, I right? had a Clinton advisor come at me. A Bill Clinton advisor. <gasps> That's hilarious. <laughs> Even Bill funnier. Clinton advisors should all shut the you fuck up. You would think. Up. You would think you they'd... are so lucky you're not in jail. You I only they'd... flew 26 <laughs> times with Jeffrey Epstein. It's not a lot of times. He was a good guy. He had a nice jet. We flew around, we saw the sky, we looked at things, we had a couple drinks. You do a good Clinton. It's all right. <laughs> it's not that good. Jeffrey uh, Jeffrey actually does a good Clinton, but that's because he's got ah! hours and hours and hours of tapes on me. <laughs> I'm uh, bad. Every time I try to do an impression, it sounds like a drunk Irish guy. No, your Bernie's pretty damn good. But Bill is so obvious. $27? Yeah, there it is. You know why $27? Because that's my social security number. 27 that's good. Yeah, he's because he was the twenty seventh person alive. I it's get an it. old joke, Joe. Get it? I get it. Who's funnier it. in twenty sixteen? I get it. Okay, but any Bill Clinton advisor calling you a sexist? Yeah, that is it, that's God rich, huh? Damned hilarious. That's rich. Did you wipe the cum off your dress before you called me a sexist? Wah, wah, wah. Bang, 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 bang. That fucking guy. <laughs> Oof! When he dies, there will be stories. Yeah. Well, uh, there's already stories. Uh, we just we just haven't heard them. Oh yeah. Yeah, but I mean, it's just—it's amazing how much they can keep quiet. Well, it's amazing that the Epstein thing just comes and goes, and nobody gets nobody, nobody gets thrown run out of office, nobody gets nothing, no, no, nothing, fucking no. nothing. Well, how about the fact that they accidentally erased the first attempted suicide video? <laughs> Whoops, we accidentally erased that too. How about they erased all the torture videos? I Whoops. mean, the, they did that. The CIA did that. They Whoopsies. lied to Congress on camera. They, hey, they it's Joe. We're living in the shit happens. <laughs> Things go bad. What does Jesse Ventura say? He says, uh, when you're telling the truth is, ah, oh, I can forget that quote, but when you're living in uh, the universal deceit, telling the truth is a treasonous act or something. Mm. I, I just said it earlier and I oh, can't remember it. Jesse Ventura. Yeah, he was going to run for president. Wasn't he? He, he, he? As an independent? I don't know. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I think he toyed with it. Is Bloomberg still running? Yes. He's, he is. Yes. I don't hear anything about he's it. He's spending tons of money on uh, ads and stuff, and so is uh, Steyer. Steyer, they say, was like number two, and he, he got himself up to like number two in South Carolina or something because of all the money he's spending, and you talk to people who live there, they go, I went home for Christmas, and every third commercial was a Tom Steyer commercial. Really? Mm-hmm. So it's a local thing, so he's yeah. trying to get so, that market. Yeah. So he's like, okay, I might not win Iowa, but I can maybe... Put all my money into South Carolina. So do you think the establishment wants Elizabeth Warren? Because she's, because of the fact, look, she's willing to play ball. Yes. She wants to be president. Yes. She, she was a Republican forever. And then she switched over, became a Democrat. This thing about him, Bernie, being sexist is so obviously a political ploy. <sighs> it's so transparent and really gross. Yeah. And so now when someone acts, so now when they call Trump a sexist, it doesn't land. Right. Exactly. They cried wolf to me. That's times. exactly what, I mean, you at, they teach this to six year olds. Don't cry wolf. Yeah. And here they are. An entire organization that's the establishment has been crying wolf. It, it's crazy. These motherfuckers. These motherfuckers. What do you keep looking at your shirt for? I spilled um, some of that turmeric coffee on it. And oh. I washed it off. Oh, okay. During the show. I did oh, did you? I didn't even notice. Yeah. Didn't see that? See how unnoticed, uh, unobservant I am? It's all right. It's all right. See a little spot there. It's so, no big deal. so, so, how many times you go out in a week? How many times I do shows? Yeah, stand up. Um, it depends on the week, but always at least four. 
Um, this week I'm only working Tuesday and Wednesday night because I've got to go and do the UFC this weekend in Vegas. Oh. And uh, I didn't schedule a gig. And uh, But a regular weekend, whew, boy, depending on if I'm on the road or here, if I'm here, I mean, on a regular week, I'll work Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. I do that all the time. I'll do multiple sets a night. I'll do the store. I'll do the improv. Do you Sometimes watch- I'll do the ice house. Okay. So uh, I change subjects real quick. Do you watch boxing? Yes. Did you watch Ruiz? Yes. What? what? He got fat and he was partying. Why did he do that? He had a good time. Fucked up. Got rid of his trainer. He did a lot of things wrong. They, at first, they were saying yeah. he lost too much weight. Did you yeah. remember that? But that was just because there was a photo that he was doing, like, the Instagram angle. Oh, is that it? It's like him in the bathroom looking down. Oh, you know, okay. If you, if you, like, have a camera and you pose it a certain way, you can make yourself look slim. Okay. Yeah. Like, I get nothing, nothing gets me more excited than a good boxing match. Well, that fight should have been a great fight, but Andy fucked up. Yeah. He really fucked up. He had and no afterwards, plan. Afterwards, he was asking for a rematch. I, I'm pretty sure he trained himself, too, for that Yeah, fight. I think he did. Yeah. Well, he was, I know for a fact. Why he would was, he do all that? He was partying. Because he became the heavyweight champion of the world in an, an incredible knockout. And I bet everybody was kissing his ass. And he bought a Rolls Royce. He came to the podcast. When oh, he, yeah? When he did the podcast, he came in a Rolls Royce. Oh. Uh, yeah. Woo! Uh, Which boy. doesn't necessarily mean you're going off the rails, but it's a but really good indication. Yeah, I mean, if he showed up in a fucking Caprice Classic, I'd be like, this guy's dialed in. <laughs> yeah. He's focused. Yeah, he's he going to get this fuck. one. That's he's got right. an old cop car he's driving around with. You know? <laughs> no hubcaps. Yeah. <laughs> shitty old let's, bench seats. Let's go get the championship. Yeah, he's he's Rocky Balboa. But he he had his chance, and they're not going to give him another one. Cause no? Because he, he can beat a lot of guys. Yeah. But I don't know if he can sell a lot of pay-per-views. Especially after that second performance. The problem with the second performance is the second performance was so piss poor that you're going to need multiple like big wins in fights before people take you seriously again. Again, and he needs a real nutritionist. He really does. Even though he he won being fat, there was a lot of factors in that fight. One big factor that I have heard from people who are very knowledgeable and in the know, insiders, was that Anthony Joshua was hurt in training that he got rocked and maybe even got KO'd when he was training and not not too uh, distant from the fight, like oh, two weeks out. really? Two weeks out from the fight, got KO'd. Yeah. Oh, that's Look, not good. When you're a heavyweight and you're slinging those fucking gigantic fists at each other, like yeah. all those guys need to do is catch each other once. once. Just once. Right Boom. On. Apparently it just happens all the time. There was a, a Russian heavyweight boxer who was just criticized because he showed this video of a sparring session where he flatlines his trainer or his uh, his sparring partner with one punch. It happens. It happens all the time. For the knockouts you see in the ring, there's probably, you know, dozens more you'll never see with top fight top flight guys that are just, you know, they're bringing in guys. Like when Klitschko was the champion, he brought in guys like Anthony Joshua to spar with. He brought in guys like Deontay Wilder. He sparred with Deontay Wilder. I didn't know that. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, these guys, they spar with I love, killers. I mean, I love, I love watching Deontay. It's exciting. It's like, you know, at any mo- exactly like you yeah. said, at any moment it can happen. The fight can turn around. Deontay's he, a freak. Yeah. He's a freak. Yeah. Freak of nature. Oh, so in what way? There's no one I've ever seen who can knock everyone out. Oh, and that's him. He knocks everyone out. Yeah. There's never been a guy. If you look at his record, it's insane. It's not just the fact that he's won so many fights. He only has one decision loss. He has one draw with uh, Tyson Fury. Fury. And then the rest, he knocks people into orbit. Yeah. Every other fight, he has 40 knockouts and 40 wins. And that Cuban guy he just laid out, that guy was tough. Oh, my God. And he hit him on the forehead. Yes. And he hit him like this. It was like a short punch. He's he hits so hard it doesn't Ortiz. even make sense. Yeah, yeah. Ortiz went. Ortiz down was one. tough, and he was down. Like, yeah. What in the fuck <laughs> just happened? Yes. He hits people, and they have a look on their face like they can't even believe how hard he hits them. Yeah. That uh, Dominic Brazil, that KO, like right after the Tyson Fury fight. Oh, okay. Oh my God, he's a murderer. Yeah. He's the one, the most murderous puncher I've ever seen in the heavyweight division. So I think they're him, him and Fury are going to fight again. Yes. Yeah. It's in February exciting. Oh, next it's month. That's exciting. Yeah. Yeah. There it is. Oh, fantastic! Tyson Fury's masturbating seven times a day to prep for Wilder rematch. Bring no. his testosterone up. He said. That brings his testosterone up. That's what he said. That's what he said. 
Wow, I think it's just <laughs> Jesus. Christ. I think he's reading into that. So who's that fighter that used to drink his own urine? Leota Machida. It was a boxer. Oh, really? Yeah. There was a boxer. Yeah, a lot of people were doing that for a while. They thought urine therapy was uh, That is not to... true, right, Joe? I know you're oh, not a doctor, but... <laughs> I am definitely a doctor, <laughs> and it is true. And I want you to do it now. I've, I drank my piss before. I tried it. Oh, come on! Tyson Fury on ways he's preparing for a while. I'm masturbating seven times a day to keep up my testosterone pumping. Pump it, pump it, pump it, pump it. Don't you know? I got to keep active and the testosterone flowing for the fight. Don't want the levels to go down. So I always thought having sex was bad for you before a fight. It's supposed to be. Yeah, your levels actually go up. Not that it's bad, but some people think it's a distraction. Like Mike Tyson's view was, uh, I, he said that he felt that sex was distracting. So he would have sex just so that he didn't have to think about it. Because if he didn't have sex, then he was just thinking, thinking about, about sex it. all the time. But when Tyson was in his prime, you got to also remember he's a really young guy. Like he was in his early 20s. His testosterone was through the fucking yeah. roof. You know, and the the level of girls that were bombing on him. Yes. Well, oh, my he, God. I mean, Robin Givens yeah. was beautiful. The most beautiful women in the world yeah. were trying to get some of that, that fucking gladiator dick. Woo! <laughs> But I think for him, he really felt like sex was a distraction, and if he could just have sex, then he wouldn't think about it. So I saw this play one time. It was written by uh, Steve Martin, and it was a fictitious meeting between Picasso and Einstein in a bar in France. It was called Picasso at La Pilagile. Mm. And uh, in it, Picasso's painting, and he's talking, and he says, an artist must stay well fucked. Otherwise... His eye goes from the page to the windowsill, down to the street, across, over to the cafe where the girl's sitting with her skirt up. And, uh, and it's like, you got, that's what, that, I, that always stuck with me, yeah. right? If an artist doesn't stay well fucked, all he's going to do doing is thinking about getting laid. Yeah, men will understand that, but men will rarely say that in the presence of women. <laughs> and so because of that, women either don't believe it or they dismiss it. Or they think you're a pig for expressing it. Right. All those things. But men alone, they'll go, oh, yeah, that makes sense. Like, if you say that, you got to stay well fucked. Like, oh, yeah, of course. You have to. Otherwise, you get fucking distracted. It, it is true. Women have no idea. I heard a thing on NPR one time, probably 15 years ago, and they were doing a story about this uh, woman who decided to transition to be a man. And so she documented it and did like an audio thing. And she talked about how... Uh, when she was into it and started feeling her testosterone and she would become attracted to women and she goes, it didn't have to be a boob. It could be an elbow. It could be her ankle. It could be whatever. And I, and she goes, I finally understood 13 year old boys. Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. What it is. Pretty fucking yeah. distracting, isn't it? Yeah. And then you got to keep your shit together. Well, it's not just that. It's a biological imperative. It's a reason right. why people breed. Right. It's like that's built into the DNA to mm -hmm. make people attracted to females so they can spread their DNA. I mean, that's what it is. It's that simple. It's it. It's it. Billy. To deny that is crazy. But you've got men denying it because they want women to like them, and then you got women <laughs> dismissing it because they, they they think that the men who express it in an honest way are pigs and sexist, and they exhibit toxic masculinity, which is that's a hilarious expression because you need to thank toxic masculinity for all the bridges, all the fucking, all the jets, all the rockets, all this toxic masculinity. If you break down all the things that men have invented and all these toxic men have prevented like you from being murdered in war and protected the country and all the, all the different things that you could attribute to toxic masculinity, most of it's positive. <laughs> okay. Uh, we, we, now I forgot what that was. I had this question as it's sitting in my head since you started Shit. talking about toxic masculinity and I fucking you can't, can't even get the word I can't out. Even say it. I can't even say it. I can't fucking sovereignty. Toxic masculinity is a ridiculous thing to say. There's t there's terrible men. There's terrible human beings that happen to be men. There's also terrible human beings that happen to be women. There's not toxic femininity. They're just they just happen to be women women who developed in a terrible way, most likely with bad parents, most likely abuse, physical and or sexual, and then they become a monster at the end of all this process. This is the same with men. Bad men 
are just bad human beings that happen to be men. And when you see terrible things happen, it's not because of toxic masculinity. It's because of, it's a bad person. I believe in the individual. There's individuals, and some of them are bad, and some of them are good. But you want if you just want to generalize against all men, like you're you're on an uphill road. There's too many. And obviously not me. I've never invented anything. But there's too many things that men have done that are positive. There's way too many. There's too many things. If you wanted to have like a, a scoreboard and you wanted to compete men versus women, why? W what are you going to say when you look at all the different accomplishments that men have made? And obviously it's not me and it's not you. I'm not talking about us, like w that we're on a team. But I'm right. saying like just this, uh, this concept that men are bad. And you hear this a lot today, especially white men. I don't want to hear from white men. Okay, well that's crazy because there's a lot of nice white men. Like this is dumb. Phil you, Donahue. You, yeah, <laughs> he's one of them. But just just this idea that you can generalize about one entire group, whether it's by gender or whether it's by race or by, by anything, but you can do that with white men. You can't really do that with brown women. You can't say, here's a problem with black women. You know, all black women are this, that. People would go, you're a racist piece of shit. But if you say, here's a problem with white men. Both are gross. Both statements, so generalizations are disgusting, whether they're a gender-based generalization or a, a sex-based generalization, whatever it is. So they would say that that's okay to say that about white men because of the, of the power dynamic. Yes, exactly. That white men have power, so if we say that, it doesn't... It right, it's doesn't, not even racist. Right. Right. That's what... That's. No, I don't know. I'm not a... You it's know, a dumb argument. I'm not a professor, so it's, I don't know if that's true or not, but... Uh, the, you, the white power... This is the thing. White men have more power, sure, the, but they also have more power than white men. It's a tiny percentage of white, men, of who white have power? men who have the power that we're talking about. When you're talking about CEOs, when you're talking mm -hmm. about you know, judges or what, the, yes, yes, white men are in those positions of power, but they're also in those positions of power uh, over most white men. Like it's, it's not, it's, it's a very small amount of people that have an extraordinary amount of influence. Yeah, they happen to be white men, but when you say white men suck, look at this. Like, no, that's that's the smallest percentage of people. Who are these billionaires? Who are these CEOs? Who are these judges? Who are these people that are in positions of power that happen to be white men? So, have you ever? Now, I, again, I don't know. I, I heard a guy uh, refer to himself like a regular guy refer to himself as a cis male. Oh, I'm going to do that from now on. Have that, has anyone ever done that? It kind of blew me. Like, I didn't even know what it was when I first heard it. Yeah. It's nonsense. What, what? You're a male. If you're a trans woman and you, you want to be referred to only as a woman, fine. No problem with that. But I'm not going to call myself a cis male. That's some new made up shit. It sounds like you're calling yourself a sissy. Sissy. Yeah. It does, like when I first heard it, I'm like, I thought that's what a guy was doing. When, oh. I, when I first heard it, a guy said, I'm a cis male, blah, blah, blah. I'm like, you're a sissy? I didn't know what it meant. I read this tweet once by this person who was saying basically to shame people into using that ram it down their throats and eventually they'll accept it and it'll become normal and that you have to because if they want to refer to us as trans we have to refer to them as cis and we have to force them to oh, refer to themselves as cis yes yes i don't even know that's where it came it's from to 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 make a clear distinction so instead of making it look like a trans woman is lesser you say, you, instead of that, you have cisgender and transgender. Oh. So they're, they're, oh. because you're, you're adding to that name, that prefix, yeah. because you're adding to both now, yeah. now you've equalized the playing field. You level the playing field. But the problem with that is trans is extremely rare. It's the reason why you have that prefix in the first place, because it's really, really unusual to meet a trans woman, despite how the internet would have you feel. I was always, uh, I'm sure it's a tough life to be a transgendered yes. person, like an incredibly tough. Uh, I was always a little jealous. <laughs> I'm no, you're not. Why was, don't you become a woman? I was always like, God, it looks like fun. <laughs> Why don't you dress up like Meghan McCain and just start going on rants on your show? You'd be free. I could do that. You would have such a fucking free pass. I mean, look, Caitlyn Jenner killed the lady. No one even talks Nobody about Nobody even it. says anything. No, she just slammed her into traffic, Isn't not paying wild? attention, rear ended her into oncoming Coming traffic. traffic. She's dead now, and no one even brings it up. Everyone's like, well, she's so brave. Do you think she's intact? I heard she cut it off. Oh, my God. Is it gone? I, I, yeah. I don't. But that was an accident, right? Yeah. I mean, it wasn't like. It was a careless accident. Oh, but still, okay. she rear-ended somebody and slammed her into oncoming traffic. Okay. And whether or not she was on her phone, 
I don't know. Do you ever worry you're going to say something wrong? <laughs> I'm always worried. Like I, I'm ignorant about, like I said, I have big gaps in yeah. my knowledge of stuff. And so I, I remember I was, what was I talking about the other day? And I got it totally wrong. Like I didn't know, like somebody from the, what Jamaica. Uh, that's also an African American. I didn't know that. Sure, I, because they came they over from, from I, yeah, Africa to but that's, Jamaica. That's what I'm talking about. How dumb. I wouldn't say African American. I but mean, that's what I they guess say. once they came to America and they're American citizens, and yeah, they're, they're African Americans. Yeah. yeah. So I didn't. Again, but this is a lot of Jamaicans refer to themselves as Jamaicans, though. The thing about Jamaicans is like it's really unique how like unique cultures are known for like specific things that are very positive. Like Jamaicans are known for incredible work ethic. Yeah, like Jamaicans have multiple jobs. It's always a, a stand-up joke. No kidding. Yeah, yeah. In New York, there was always jokes about Jamaicans about you know uh, that they would get mad at if you had less than five jobs. Oh no, yeah. kidding! Yeah, Jamaicans are known for being like very hustle hard, oriented. Hard well, see, workers. that's a New York thing. I mean, yeah. I, I'll, the only thing I've ever heard about Jamaicans is the stereotype of pot and all that. That too, stuff. that too. But they have a lot of jobs. Pot smokers having five jobs goes to show you yeah. it doesn't take away your ambition. They don't. It does. It's that. That's nonsense. Look, I smoke a lot of pot. I'm I'm pretty ambitious. I work a lot. Does it, do you ever? So I'll do a show right where i'm like criticizing someone or something and then i'll smoke a joint afterwards to relax and then i start second guessing everything yeah, i of said course, do of you course. do that yeah, yeah yeah definitely okay i feel Girl, we're talking shit yeah i know you know i mean i'm thinking about my poorly worded rant of um, male versus women and i'm thinking like well i probably should have said that better but that's just part of how it works you know what, what i was getting at but from all of this though is that we have to look at each other as individuals and this identity politics bullshit that people play, whether it's male versus female, whether it's black versus white and Asian and this and that, we, they have to be humans, humans first. And one of the weirder things that's going on in Hollywood now is they're, they're leaning so hard on diversity that it gets distracting. It's like it gets – like I went to see – as an example, I went to see Frozen, the musical – Frozen is about a Nordic. Pe there's Nordic people. One girl has magic. Did you ever see it? You don't have kids. Do you? I don't, no, I don't. Um, in the play, in the musical, the dad is black and the mom's Chinese, which is like okay, maybe she's Asian. I don't know. Maybe she's Korean. I don't know. It's hard to tell. I can't see that good. I'm 52. Okay, it's pretty far away. But she was obviously Asian. And then they have a kid, and then the young version of the kid is Asian. And then the old version of the kid later in the musical is white. I'm like, you're distracting the fuck yeah, out of me Yeah, that's distracting. You're distracting the fuck out of me. That's and, just, uh, but how does a black guy and an Asian lady make two, two blonde ladies? Like, right. What's happening here? Or one has red hair. How'd that happen? How did the black guy and the Chinese lady make a blonde? Are you, yeah, uh, we're supposed, I guess. Like, don't you go continuity? But they're just, it's, <laughs> it's distracting. The guy, they were, he was great in his role. She was great in her role. They were excellent. It worked. I accepted it and I moved on. But I know what you're doing. You know, if you had a white guy playing a black guy in a movie, I'd be like, what is happening here? Why is this white guy pretending to be a black guy? This is, this is, this is are we going to address this? Like, if there was a musical and there was a guy and we decided, we'll just have a white guy play the, uh, the father of, uh, you know, some, some black guy, and we're just not going to say why he had a kid that was black. We just assume that you'll figure it out. Or just, you just, you know, yeah, that's that breaks the fourth wall. It breaks your but you what what is you, you do, I'm suspending my disbelief yes, and then you're doing things exactly. to make me disbelieve. It's I'm, it's distracting. It's yeah. distracting. But I I I, but I appreciate understand, you understand it. what yes, they're doing. Though. I appreciate it yeah. because I think ultimately what it is is it's all a, all of it is moving in the right direction. It's just doing it in a very clunky way. They're moving against discrimination. They're moving against racism. They're moving for cultural diversity. Beautiful. But it's just distracting. The way they're doing it is so odd. But it's like Hollywood is so gross. They lick their finger. They have no virtue. They lick their finger. They're like, which way the wind blowing? This way? We, we need Asians. And then they'll just fucking just start hiring Asians for things and trying to get Asian people jobs and try to, look, 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 we have Asians. We're, we're really, uh, and then if it becomes Jamaicans, Jamaicans, we need Jamaicans. Get them in here. Get them in here. They don't give a fuck. They're trying to make money. They're trying to make money. And one of the best ways to make money is to ride cultural trends. And so, our cultural trend right now is a good one. Even though there's a lot of people that are, they're, they're basically, 
they're controversy pimps, right? So when these things come up, they use this controversy to gain money or notoriety or push their cause or to use it as the wind behind their sale so they can talk a lot of shit about other people and get a lot of attention. It gives them a bit of immunity. Yes, it gives them a lot of immunity. Yeah. And so like all these things we were talking about. Of course. Yeah. How have you experienced it? I've had people accuse me of being sexist. I've, I've had that. Clinton we already of, established that you were sexist. I, well, of course I am, um, because I <laughs> because I treat women equally. Yes, that's the problem. <laughs> yeah, of course. You know, I was sexist because I voted for Jill Stein. Well, anybody that says you're sexist for making fun of Elizabeth Warren dancing is a fucking buffoon, and that's a perfect example of what I'm talking about. Mm-hmm. Like, are you saying that you a person running for the commander in chief of the greatest army the world has ever known, and you can't make fun of the way they dance because they have a vagina? Fuck you. I am woman, hear me roar, just yeah. don't make fun of my dancing. Yeah, or my roars. My, <laughs> my roars my, like, rah! I, again, it's like the, I thought the answer to this was to treat everybody equally. Yes. That's how it should be. We, but, but identity politics, the, the real problem with it, of course, always, is that you cannot ever say, this is a man, so he must be that. This is a woman, so she must be that. This is a black person, so they must be this. That's a, those, those generalizations are bad for everybody. People are nuanced. And- if we don't believe in the individual, then we don't really believe in equality. We, we have to, everyone has to have their own way to make it through this life and express themselves in a unique way where they can contribute in a unique way and we can appreciate them for who they are. Not appreciate them as a woman or appreciate them as a man or as a white man or a black woman or what. That's nonsense. It's so dumb. Like you happen, you might happen to be a uh, a black man, or you might happen to be an Asian man, you might happen to be all those things, but you're a person, you're a fucking individual. And we should, especially when it comes to meritocracy things, like positions of power in government, like you get elected officials, or, or even comedians or anything else, you, you wanna make sure that the person who's, this is, they're good, So they're just good. There's Yes, yeah, so there's that. Yeah. But then there's there's also this other little part of it. Like so even someone who say doesn't have the pedigree, like there's a white guy from Harvard, right? Mm-hmm. He has the straight A's, the greatest whatever. And then you might get a a minus student who's a minority from sober or a B plus student, and that would be more effective to have in a position because they have a different world experience. So a meritocracy in a sense kind of leaves out some people who are have different hurdles to get over and have different life experiences that this person won't have. You know, you see what I'm saying? Like you become the people you're surrounded by. So you might be an African American, but it, 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 or or um, uh, so it's it's more important to have. Uh, but again, different but again. economic uh, yes. th- represented because you can be really smart like Ch- like Chelsea Clinton, but she doesn't know what it's like to have to uh, have her medicine. She doesn't know what it's like to have to drop a pharmacy to get f- medicine for her daughter. Or you know what I mean? It's like right. she Real might be world. super smart, but she doesn't have this information that we need. Which is like when FDR, when he was doing the banks and stuff, he got a banker from Texas. He didn't go to Wall Street. Go, you know what I mean? He got regular people mm-hmm. to come, and so that there's something to that too, right? So well, it's not just a straight meritocracy. Well, it is a meritocracy in that there's merit in their life experiences. Oh, okay. Well, you they, put it that these way. These individuals that live these difficult lives. Like, I think that's one of the greatest currencies that a person really carries with them in their life is their experience overcoming adversity. Their experience overcoming adversity shapes their character. Yes. And when you meet someone, I mean, maybe you meet um, this woman and she uh, she has, uh, you know, all B's through college, but she's been through a lot of shit and she's uniquely clever in how she handles things and you talk to her and you look at her record and you go, you know what, I like you better than this guy who got all A's because he seems kind of like yeah. spectrum-y and he's not going to like fit in with my company. But yeah, that makes sense. But that, again... We're just, you don't just look at meritocracy. You don't just look at grades. You look at the human overall, the individual. And there's a lot of benefit to people that have overcome difficult lives. Like those people come out interesting. Those people come out important because they, they've, they've seen some shit that you haven't seen. Yes, that's, that is what, and they, yeah. and they understand things that you don't understand. Yes, yes. And that's why like, sort of like a guy like Barack Obama could have a diverse cabinet, mm-hmm. but they're all from the same class. Right, and right. So well, that's fake diversity. That's fake right? diversity. Right. Yes, yeah. so they're all, 
he still he served he served the uh, establishment power like any white president did, and, and his cabinet did the same thing. By the way, his cabinet came from an email from Citigroup, which I know you know. Yeah, fuck. Yeah, you know, we, our it's th these things are complicated. That's part of the problem with any of these conversations, and also they're so loaded. When you it's, talk about men or women or black or white or anything, like everybody's on edge. Like, don't say anything stupid. Right. What, how do you feel really? Like, oh. Well, I'm white, so I don't have those experiences. So I always try to limit how I talk about it. Like I always say, I shouldn't be talking about this because I am. I don't have. You should be talking about anything you want to talk about. This idea that you could be, you should be silenced because you're you're not uh, in some protected group. That's nonsense. I'm always af well. I'm always afraid I'm going to say something r ridiculous and ignorant, which I do often. Well, yeah, say. me too. <laughs> I'm going to say ignorant, ridiculous shit. Like this, you have to have the so, ability to say ignorant, ridiculous shit if you're going to have a free flowing conversation. Like you and I, so, we didn't even talk on the phone before this. We had no idea what we were going to talk about. We, right? we didn't do a pre-interview. Nothing. <laughs> we did nothing. We come in here. We you start imagine rattling. if we did a pre-interview? It'd be hilarious. We just start talking about farts and. Blow jobs, cigars, would be like, it would ridiculous. Be ridiculous. <laughs> <laughs> fucking pre. We ridiculous. want to talk about Jimmy. I don't know. I fucking yeah. It, it would it most certainly. I would be jack it off seven times a day to keep my testosterone up. Uh, Let's talk about that. Yeah, get it, get it, get it. Pre-interviews. They yeah. still do pre-interviews on. Do you? By the way, do you ever watch any of those shows? No. Ever? No, no one does. Very few people are watching those. shows. I mean, Conan O'Brien get less views than my show. No, I know. It's, that's it's why. Sad. He's do, that's why they're all doing podcasts now. I know. No one's watching that fucking show. There was a crazy article that Conan O'Brien is leading the wave. Wait, of, oh my do god! You see that in new media? Yes. Like, what are you talking about? We've been doing this shit for fifteen years, yeah, bitches. What? <laughs> And this, what the fuck? He doesn't even get good numbers on his podcast. No? No. Like the actual downloads, I mean, he does all right, but he doesn't do as good as like Dax Shepard or me or any of the people that are at the, the top of the heap in well, comedy. I well, be, you know, you use your platform, Joe, to actually have real conversations and say things. Now, I haven't listened to Conan Bryan's podcast because, uh, you know, I've got anything else to do, but... He's interviewing famous people. Yeah, it's fucking the same bullshit, yeah. and it's not... I mean, hey, Mark Maron's got that covered, yeah. right? He did that. He's he been doing it for 10 fucking years. That's right. People yeah. opened up to their heart. Like, they never. So he has this thing, and then you do this other thing. It's fucking covered. You aren't breaking any new... That was crazy. That, had, that was a New York Times headline, wasn't it, Joe? I think it was Or variety. was it Variety? I oh, think it was Variety, variety. Mm -hmm. and everybody in Hollywood was like, what in the fuck are you talking about? Yeah, yeah. And, it was, well, it was funny, too. Yeah. I got tagged on it so many times. I'm like, I'm not even going to comment, because I can't. <laughs> it's Conan O'Brien. He's revolutionizing. Yeah. <laughs> he's, he's, yeah, he's changing the game. <laughs> he's changing the game, because they gave, they had a photo shoot. Yeah. He's for, a white male. For variety. He's a problem. He is a cis male. He's another one of those white men at the top of podcasting. It's bullshit. <laughs> Yeah, I don't know if he's at the top of podcasting, Joe. I wouldn't say that. All of it. It's just gross. Did you ever do his show? No. Uh, yeah, I did a show before. A couple times. They, seem, yeah. they all seem like nice people. He's a nice guy. He no, seems he's like a nice they guy. They all seem like very nice people. I feel bad when I go after them on Twitter. <laughs> I go after Andy Richter all the time. Of course time. you do. I go after Andy Richter Why all the time. Why do you go after and Andy he's Richter? A, I can tell he's a nice guy. I, can, I know he is. Why do you go after him? Well, because you know, he's uh, famous, right? And, and he's uh, a white male. And he's a white male, a so it's, problem. it's very safe for me to go after him. But he... They, there's this um, Hollywood mentality on the left, right? And this Hollywood mentality on the left is that all bad things started in January 2017. They have no idea how we got there. So he's tweeting out this stuff about how Trump is uh, has the cognition of an eight year old, right? Because he wants to do war crimes. And so what you know? How crazy? Can you believe this guy? I'm like. Dude, they've been fucking doing war crimes since I was born. Why are you acting like this just started? We are just we don't ever prosecute them, and they're not going to prosecute him for war crimes. Right. Why are you fucking doing that? You know what war criminals do? They go and dance with Ellen on daytime television. That's the cognition of Hollywood. And Michelle Obama says George Bush and her have the exact same values. A war criminal. She has the exact same. That's the cognition of a fucking first lady. You want to talk about cognition, how we fucking got here, and you're smarter than that, Andy Richter, and that's why I hold his feet to the fire. I know he's a nice guy. But he gets locked into that team it's mentality. All that. It's all team. It's all fucking vote blue no matter who. It's all, it's all uh. forget how we got here. Let's forget that Barack Obama was unbelievably corrupt, which is why we don't have a functioning banking system system, which is why we don't have a functioning healthcare system, which we why he took us from two wars to seven, which is why he had a peace prize and a fucking kill list. Ooh.
Wait, oh, where's my kill list? Oh, maybe it's underneath my peace prize. I use it as a paperweight, kind of ironically. Anyway, these are the things that I try to focus on, Joe. And by the way, I was right about all of them. Yes. And I was right about fucking Russiagate. You were. But the beautiful Did thing about you- Did I come out here and do a victory lap yet? You should. You should <laughs> spin around your chair. The thing about you, though, is like you are a left-wing guy that's willing to criticize the left. And for some people, that seems to that's be a, a taboo thing. Like, they don't yes. want to talk about the left. Oh, you can't. I'm First of all, so I found out that uh, people who want to make it in the Democratic Party are not allowed to come to my shows. No. So I was doing a show, and this woman who I know who was involved in democratic politics, and I kind of want to say anything about who they are because they'll get in trouble. And so she came to my show, and she goes, you know, this other person who's climbing in the Democratic Party was supposed to come with me, and at the last minute, she didn't. And I called her, and I said, why aren't you coming? She goes, you know, if I get seen at a Jimmy Dore show, my career in the Democratic Party's over. Oh, it's Kamala Harris. I could tell by your <laughs> accent. You racist piece of shit. I could tell. Couldn't you tell, Jamie? I could tell. And I'm like, that's... That <laughs> She, has she ever been on your show? Kamala Harris? Yes. No. Oh, must be her. Oh, we did some quick, easy FBI work right there. So anyway, I, that made me feel good. That makes me feel right. good. I want to like, be an outsider. I, don't yeah. want to, I want people to be afraid of me. They're afraid of you now. Well, I don't know if they are, but they won't come on my show. So that's good. And by well, the way, my show was never about guests. My show was all about my opinion. Of course. And calling out bullshit. Yeah. So it's well, not... That's, nobody you're doing the right thing. You're doing, I'm doing the wrong thing because they all keep asking to be on my show. Oh, okay. I've had requests from all of them. Really? Oh yeah, Biden, Warren. How do you how do you resist Mayor that Pete. shit? Because I have my friends. I'd so, rather talk to my friends. Yeah, I know. I would. I get a I boner. I like Tulsi and I like I like uh, Bernie. That's it. Oh yeah. Everybody else can eat shit. Look at you, fucking progressive. Yeah. Well, I've always been. Yeah. What? Yeah. Everyone says you're right winger. They're out of their fucking mind. I've never voted right wing in my life. Really? Never. Never. I voted Democrat except for independent. I voted for Gary Johnson because he did my podcast. <laughs> People don't realize how par. Like I, I yeah, I'm not. I'm not right wing at all. Oh, okay. No. That's wild. No, there's nothing about me that's right wing. Yeah. Well, you kill your own food. Yeah, that's it. Well, that's crazy. The 95 plus percent of the population of the planet eats meat. I just happen to kill my own. Yeah. That's it. So that it's not like ninety five percent of the population is right wing because they kill their own food. I th I think there's a lot of right wing like family values and things like that that I admire. I think, but when it, when you ca when it gets to homophobia, when it gets to women's rights, that's where I break. Right? I I'm a hundred percent in favor of women's rights. A hundred percent in favor of gay rights, gay marriage. I, I'm a big proponent of. Th there's got to be some new action taken to clean up a lot of these crime-ridden communities. And the idea that we can spend all this money overseas, but we can't spend money on Flint, Michigan, or Detroit, or the south side of Chicago, that to me is insane. That doesn't make any sense. And this idea that we're all on the same starting page is so fucking stupid, too. That That is a very non-right-wing way of looking at it, because everybody's like, you got to pull yourself up by your bootstraps. There's a lot of people that came out of bad neighborhoods, but they didn't, they didn't fucking cry, woe is me, they just right. went out there and they kicked ass. That's nonsense. You have no idea what it's like to grow up in a crime crime-ridden, poverty-infested, drug-addled neighborhood. You don't know what that's like, and we should make it so that no one knows what that's like. If we want America better, the best way to start is to clean up all the spots that suck and make people that are coming out of there have a real chance at making something out of their life. Don't, don't have it so that they're starting out from the time they're a child with a massive deficit. That, to and me... What, and what you mean by clean, cleaning up the place... Uh, uh, I mean community programs, you, putting money into these communities. Jobs. jobs that, not just jobs, but community programs where kids have a safe place to go. Mm -hmm. That's a big part of it. Protect them from the gangs. Mm -hmm. Put more cops in those neighborhoods and have them there all the time. Make them a part of the community. they got to do something about the violence and do something about the gangs and this repetitive cycle of people growing up in these neighborhoods and getting trapped in these same horrible conditions that their parents did or their grandparents did. And it's an endless the cycle we and we pretend like we don't have the resources to fix these but, fdr did fdr went and gave yes, every you want a job i'll give you yes, a job yes. that means you're going to go work it's yeah. not i'm not giving you anything you're earning it and yeah. guess what we have the money for it wouldn't that be amazing if they did that it, there could be strategies that are implemented they might all not all work but i don't see like i don't They're feel not like trying anything. anything's doing yes yeah. we're gonna so, have we're gonna have enterprise zones yeah 
That, obviously, that doesn't. And then, they, and then they want the school to fix all the problems yeah. of the community. No, what you need is jobs. This, what people need is something to look forward yes. to. They need to know that they, if they do play by the rules, they will get things. You can have a job right now. Those people work at, and they don't have any health care. Right. And they get broken. Their life goes upside down. Exactly. I mean, you know how I ha- I have a job, but I got sick. My life got turned upside down yes. because of bills. And this is not just black communities either we're talking about the coal mining communities in west virginia, west virginia exactly. it's horrific man you don't even like i have a good friend who's from there it's like man you don't know what poverty is like you don't even know what poverty is like until you see that I people talked, have nothing i talked to a guy on my show his name is nick smith from virginia and he told me he was a waffle house cook and he told me and i, I might have even told you this before he said hey we all knew that donald trump was a loud mouth yankee who should have had his ass kicked a long time ago but hillary clinton wasn't offering us anything so mm-hmm. he would at least offering us something. Right. So they're desperate. Yeah. These people need something. Yeah. Liz, Liz, she wouldn't even sign on to a fifteen dollar minimum wage when she was running. What is it? What the fuck's wrong with you? Yeah. It, well, she didn't even believe in gay marriage until two thousand thirteen. Mm-hmm. How about that? Mm-hmm. Two thousand fucking thirteen. She this is when she came around with gay marriage. Get <laughs> you the were, fuck you were, out you were ahead of her here. on that, weren't you, Joe? Yeah, well, I actually lived in San Francisco around gay people when I was real little. I was really, like seven to eleven. My family lived right off of uh, Lombard Street. We no lived, kidding. Yeah, we lived in San Francisco in the height of the, I mean, it was the Vietnam War. There's all these hippies. My wow. stepdad's a hippie. Oh, no kidding. Yeah. So it's like, I mean, I've been liberal my whole life. I just look like a Republican. <laughs> You know? Yeah, I think that's and it. And you I'm like beating the shit out of people. Well, I like some violent things, and I have guns, and you know, there's a lot of things, things that, that you could make an inference. You're like, oh, that guy seems like he would be. But no, I... My friend, <laughs> my friend Graham Elwood is... Uh, do you know him? Sure. He's He was on his live stream the other day, and he's very anti-war like me, and so these people were fucking with him to be pro-war. And he's like, that's right, I'll knock you out. That's right. You ever been knocked out by a vegetarian? <laughs> Like that that's should be hilarious. a t-shirt. You ever been knocked out by this? That's hilarious. Well, that's another group that people like to play identity politics with. What are you eating? You know, how much how, how much of that is So you with the meat. So my doctor, Dr. Yeah. Sharp. So now you I have a special bone problem. Dr. Right? Sharp from Pasadena? That's right. <laughs> That's the, that holy shit. Yeah, I should have said that. I would have been yeah. on it, man. So he tells me, yes, he, he always does this like this, right? He goes, Now Jimmy, you're from Chicago. You eat meat, right? <laughs> <laughs> you eat deep dish pizza, right? That's what he says to me. And I go, uh, I go, yeah, I'm trying not to. And he goes, why? I go, you know, uh, I, global warming. I saw cows jumping like dogs. I, I, <laughs> I feel bad. That's that video that's what, that's what bouncing around? Yeah. I, well, can't eat, I can't eat pork just anymore. Just get it. I, well, can't, I just can't eat pork, pork anymore. Is, pork is shady. I can't do it. But, but... Wild pigs must be stopped. Oh, they're they they can kill you, right? Boars, oh, yeah. wild oh, boars. Well, they killed a lady in Texas and ate her. They they found her an, an elderly lady. They found her in her driveway, torn apart by wild pigs. Yeah, she was on her way out to the car, and she just ran into a pack of them, and they took her out. A pack? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, the, I've seen videos. Those things are. But they have to kill them. There's so many of them, and they breed so quickly. They bleed. They have four in a litter. They'll have four litters in a year. Really? Yeah. Bang, 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 bang. That's why there's millions and millions of wild pigs. Oh. They started with just a few pigs that were on like the Pinta or the Santa Maria or some shit, and they spread across the entire country. But once you find out that they have emotions. Yes, that's a problem. That's what I can't hit. I can't do that. They have that's emotions. That's why you shoot them from a distance. <laughs> Joe. You don't want to get up close. So, so your theory is they don't know it's coming. No, well, that, but that is a good way to do it. Because but what then if they you kill their quickly. mother? What if you have a pig and then you kill the pig's you mother? You don't do that if you're an ethical hunter. You don't. Oh. You don't shoot a pig that has piglets. Yeah, oh, you try okay. to avoid it unless. What about a deer? The only, the only time they do, they don't do that either. That's illegal. Oh, the only time they do do that though. In some places, it's illegal. The only time they do do that with pigs is when they're trying to eradicate all of them. Like, there's some farmlands that ha- experience just devastating losses because of wild pigs. Okay. And especially in Texas, millions and millions of dollars a year, which cripples these companies. And they go under because of wild pigs. Like, these, f- some farms can literally really? go bank. Oh, my God. So you have no idea what it's like unless you've been around them. But what about p- pig farming, right? That's a different thing. So yeah, most pig farming is disgusting. I can't. It's horrible. 
But then there's there's ethical pig farms where they raise these pigs where they get let them roam around uh-huh. and the meat looks different because they're eating acorns and natural foods. Oh, really? Yeah, there's a guy named uh, Joel Salatin and he runs this uh, farm called Polyface Farms and he's all about regenerative farming and he discusses like how like the the way animals live best is the way they live naturally yeah and that you're sp- chickens are supposed to roam free so he has this portable uh chicken house and they roll it into a new field and then the chickens go into the chicken house at night and then in the morning they come out and then they go roam around and they move it to another spot so they eat all the bugs and all the grass and all the stuff in the area and then they move to a new spot and so they they raise chickens and the eggs are healthier the 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 pigs the the pork is healthier these these pigs are wandering around in these open areas and then they corral them and then they then they kill them quickly i just once i found out you know they have real emotions like dogs i I just think about my dog and i just i just fall apart i can't i hear you and, but, but, I, but wild pigs are a different animal. Yeah, that's different. Because they're an invasive species. You know, they, they actually morph. They change shape when they become... Like a wild pig and a domestic pig is the same animal. Like when people talk about, oh, a Russian wild boar. This is all nonsense. Really? It's all Suscrafa. It's all one genus. It's the same animal. Really? Yeah. Really? When, you, when a wild... When a pig, a domestic pig goes wild... I mean, there's different v- versions of them, but they can all breed with each other. When a domestic pig goes wild, like say if you had a domestic pig... And you said, go ahead, Porky, be free. And you open up your gate. Within weeks, within weeks, they start to physically change. Their snout starts to lengthen. Their hair gets thicker and bushier and their tusks grow. No kidding. Yes. They literally become what you think of when you think of wild Wild. boars. Mm -hmm. It just takes a while. But they, they, they're, they're, they're one of the weirder animals. They're almost like gremlins when you feed them after midnight. When you let them go, they start changing. They morph. So I... uh, I, so Dr. Sharp says to me from Pasadena, from Pasadena? he says, uh, he says, well, you should eat meat. And I'm like, uh, because of my condition, right? And he, he tells this long story about how we evolved. He, th- he sits down and starts telling yes. me and about how we were cavemen and inside yeah. the glaciers and the thing. And he's like, so you should eat meat, especially you because of your condition. And I go, okay, well, how often? And he goes, every day. And I was like, Jesus, I can't do that, you know? And so, but this is medical advice from a guy who saved my life, right? Yeah. So it's like, I, I eat meat a couple times a week. Do you feel better or worse when you eat it? Uh, I do have more energy. Yeah. Well, that's probably good, right? Yeah. Well, why I don't know. you eat meat more often? I have a, just because of You don't consci- have to eat pork. I know. If you eat humanely raised I mean, I eat, meat. So there's, gra- can, yeah, grass-fed, can, yeah, that kind of you shit. Yeah, you can buy grass-fed, grass-finished meat from farmers that have a commitment to humanely raised mm-hmm. and humanely euthanized animals. I wouldn't say euthanized, killed killed animals. And they when the way they kill them, when they harvest them, they just lead them into a pen. They have no idea what's coming. And they put a bolt to their head and bang, they take them out. Yeah, the it, can, it can be done in a way where the animal has no idea what happens until, it, until it's over. Mm-hmm. And, it's not like they're going to live forever. I mean, obviously, this is a slippery argument because you yeah. say that about people too, right. right? This guy's an asshole. Let's just kill him. It's not like he's going to live forever, right? You, you don't want to say that. But the 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 quality of the meat is far better if the animal is living a natural life. Right. You're talking about organic. No hormones. No hormones. No, no, no antibiotics. No corn. Yeah. No, no corn, man. That shit's terrible for cows. They're not supposed to eat that. They're, they're, they're ruminants. They, they eat fucking grass. That's what they do. When they're at their best and healthiest, and healthiest for you. There's better fatty acids in it. It's just healthier for you. And so, and so you think if you went vegetarian, it would be bad for your health? I don't know. Um, I don't think it... I think it's definitely doable. I definitely think you can go vegetarian and, and be healthy. But you have to be really careful about a lot of your nutrient levels. Yeah. You have to really make sure you get enough vitamin D, a lot of B12. You got to check your uh, essential fatty acid levels. There's a lot of stuff that like it looks real good on paper, but then you find out it's not bioavailable. I tried to go vegan for a while, and I got, I got fat. Well, it's a lot of carbs. Yeah, I was just, yeah. you know, I didn't know, what, I didn't know what I was doing. I wasn't doing it right, whatever. Yeah. I'm not, I don't like soy. Why don't you like some I like tofu. tofu. I don't fucking yeah. like that. Just something about it. Did you fuck with any of that vegan chicken stuff or any of those weird ones that are, they make them oh, look the, like real food? There's a name for that. Oh, no, no, but that fake meat they have now is fantastic. It's really bad for you, though. Do you know that? 
Oh, it actually causes God. liver problems in rats. What? Yeah, pull up the fake meat, liver problems, rats. No. Yeah, look, it's all oils. So that stuff it's is all processed oil, food oils. Yeah. It's processed vegetable oils. And that's look, bad? Yeah, just eat fucking vegetables, man. If you want to be a vegetarian, eat vegetables. Look, most, that gets boring. there's a lot of people that would say a regular burger is not good for you either. But of course, a regular burger is just meat with bread and all the bullshit. The bread and all the bullshit is what's bad for you. It's not the burger itself, as long as it's an actual meat burger, mm -hmm. particularly if it's a, a grass-fed grass burger. Yeah. So what is he pulling up? He's pulling up this study about uh, one Beyond of them, meat, the fake one of meat, them impossible, impossible burger, meat. Beyond Meat, one of them. But they were talking about how there's studies that are showing that this this is not. But they, again, they're not marketing it as a healthy alternative. No, they're marketing it as a meat free burger, and right. burger is kind of like a fun food anyway. Yeah. Here it is: rat feeding study suggests the Impossible Burger may not be safe to eat. L O fucking L. Oh wow. <laughs> But if you go to the ingredients, man, I've had scientists relay the ingredients to what me. Are they? I thought it was just coconut oil. Oh, it's a bunch it of fat. fucked up stuff because they got to make it seem like it's a real burger. Someone heme is that thing they that makes it taste like it. it's called heme 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 iron, yeah. something like that. that yeah. That's what gives it that flavor that yeah. people are looking for. How are they getting that? I don't know where they get that from. Soylent green. It's not good. It's, it's, it's a people it's joke. People. <laughs> it's people. That sucks. Know. Yeah. That sucks. Well, it's so you don't think you'll I, ever stop eating meat. You think you'll no. always you'll you're, you're like animals are here for us to eat, and that's that. I don't think that. I think we definitely evolved. The human animal yeah. evolved from eating meat, and that's not that's not under debate. I mean, we evolved from eating meat. And weirdo vegans will try to say crazy shit like, "Oh, why don't we have canines? How come we can't eat meat raw?" Well, because asshole, we figured out fire a long fucking time ago, and our bodies adapted because of that. Our teeth adapted because we figured out how to cut things with utensils, and we figured out how to cook things so that they're more tender. It's, it's not as simple as like, why, why do we have an appendix? Why is that? I'll tell you why, because we used to eat differently, and we still have a leftover organ, some weird fucking organ from, from breaking down bark and shit. You know, we don't need that anymore. We don't eat bark anymore. Is that what... Yeah, it's like roots and stuff. Like, oh, really? Yeah, I think that's what the appendix is for. I think it was initially for breaking down like very hard to oh, digest really? fibrous things. So I, I have my gallbladder out. Whoa, what did you do with it? Um, you gonna put it back in? Yeah, I'm thinking about it. <laughs> I, I have it in my glove box. But what happened? Uh, no, I just had. Yeah, I was having gallbladder attacks. I thought it was a heart attack. Whoa, where's the girl? I don't even know so where that is. It, it, it was like right here. Oh, Jesus. And I always heard like your heart attack feels like it's in the center. And this was, but this was a little lower. I'm like, this is a heart attack. I'm dying. This is no doubt I'm dying. Oh, no. I thought for sure I was dying. So I'm on the couch. And I remember I'm just like, this is, my wife calls the fireman. And I'm just like, this is it. This is how it's going to happen. I, I was kind of okay with it, right? But I was in, because I was in a lot of pain. I wanted it to end. I was like, mm. okay, if I die, I die. But then they came and they shot me, and I was like, oh, I feel fantastic again. So that, well, it wasn't. It was just my gallbladder. They took it out. And What the, does it do? The gallbladder secretes bile into your stomach to help digest things, right? So gallbladder is, would be like the, for bile, when your liver makes bile, it like uh, is your reservoir. So now I don't have a reservoir anymore. Whoa. So now it just is always kind of dripping. Is it fuck with you anymore? Not you know, it's fucked with me a lot in lots of different ways. Yeah, my my uh, appetite is uh, gets it, weird when you get nervous. It doesn't come. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't come on slowly. It's oh. just, it, bam! It so is. that's why you had to eat when you're on stage. So like that, that happened. Oh, yeah. that makes sense. So that and then and often often after I eat, I have to go right. I have to go to the bathroom right away. Right away. Yeah, I don't know. Ever since I had my gallbladder, I don't know if other people have that. I haven't Googled it. Now, was there any alternative to ke getting it removed? Did they say, hey, maybe you could change your diet? I was not given an alternative. There was, so there's, you have like calcium in deposits in your thing, and they block the duct. And then you don't, that's what causes all the pain. And so eventually it'll dislodge itself and the pain will go away, but it could kill you Whoa. if it stays and doesn't go away. And so they have to take it out. Jesus Christ. Yeah. And guess so, here, so here's a great story about our medical system, right, Joe? So I have Blue Cross insurance. I have the best that you could buy or what have you. And so I had my second gallbladder attack. And I was like, I got to get this goddamn thing out because I can't have this happen again. It hurts too much, right? So I, I called the doctor and they're like, I can't even get a consultation for three weeks in network. 
for three to get a so I have to get a consultation. Then I have to wait wait another three or four weeks to get the operation. So this could maybe be two months before I get the operation of these attacks, and I'm going to have another goddamn attack. So I went out of network, and I got another doctor to come take care of me faster, so I couldn't have to worry about so this. You had to pay out of so I had to pay out of pocket. God damn. Yes. Son of a so bitch. this whole thing you're going to have to wait. You have to fucking wait right now. Yeah. It's ridiculous. Why, why are you acting like that? No, it's true. It is true. It this- is true. I have friends in Canada. It's way worse up there, though. About waiting? Yeah. If you, like, I had a friend, she needed a knee operation. They, they waited a fucking year. So for a whole year, she's walking around with a torn ACL really? and a fucked up knee. Yeah. A whole year. A year. 12 months. 365 days. I don't just know, hobbling I don't, around. Do you know anybody in Canada with, that would trade their health care plan for a United States health plan? No, they plan? don't want to pay for it. Once you don't have to pay for it, you don't want to pay for it. You know, you know there's a, a great video where this guy interviews people in England, and he asks them, how much do you think I it saw costs it. to be married, or how much- uh, to, to have a baby. To, to have a baby. And they're like, uh, $100? <laughs> like, yes. Try 10 grand. He's like, what? What? Yeah, I saw what? that. Yeah, everybody freaks out. Everybody freaks out. Yeah, well, once you're used to things being free, you don't want to pay for them. Right. I don't Look, I think- Healthcare should be free. I really do. I think education should be free. I think if we're going to spend money as a community, if we have a gigantic community of people, and that's what a country really is, that's right? That's it. It's a community. What is the most important thing to take care of? Well, we got to take care of right. old people, sick people. We got to take care of poor people. We got to take, like, this is this the idea that somehow or another that this is a, this is a foolish notion. That you have to take care of people. That education, it wouldn't be better if more people are educated? Yeah. So why shouldn't that be free? Well, we don't have the money, but we have how much money? How much? 131 do- extra billion they gave Trump. That'd be a lot of education. Yeah. A lot of people learn shit that way. Yeah. You know? That's and- almost, that's double the money it would take to send everybody to college for free. That's hilarious. $65 billion a year to send everybody to college. They just spent $131 billion to give, give to him. That's double, right? I'm not a yeah. math surgeon, but I'm pretty sure that's double. Math surgeon. <laughs> I think if we figured out a way to, you know, you know, Ari Shafir says the same stuff. Yeah. Right. I was just on his show, and he was saying we got to take care of homeless people. I'm like, I thought you were a right winger. Oh, he's not right wing at all. I guess not. Ari's very left wing. Why would you think everybody was right wing? Because we talk shit. I don't know. I just hear shit, you know, on social media, or whatever. Oh, those idiots. They just think that because I've talked to Alex Jones or because I've had, you know, oh. right wing people on that, you know. Oh, you're platforming people, Joe? Yeah, I've been friends with Alex Jones since the 90s. I've known that guy forever. Joe, when I went in, uh, that, did I ever tell you this story? When you spit in his face? So when, so when the iced tea accidentally, I got, uh, <laughs> so, um, so whatever. First, I didn't think that would be that big of a deal. Wow, that turned out to be a big deal, right? Right. So then whatever. So then the next day I talked to some people from his show and we were all friends, right? But n- not him. And so I went down like a couple months later to do uh, Austin. So I go to this, this the steakhouse right uh, there. I forget it's the name. It's the big place, right? It's right across the street from the West End. And so I'm there. My brother came down for the weekend, my brother and his wife, and we're all sitting there. We're eating. And all of a sudden, my brother goes, Alex Jones just walked in. He's sitting right behind you. I go, get the fuck out of here. He's going to come beat me up. He's gonna come. <laughs> and, and he my gets up to swing and say, I'm friends with Joe Rogan. <laughs> But my brother's big guy, right? So all my brothers are bigger than me, and uh, and tough too, right? And uh, so I was like, all right, well, if you see him coming this way, <laughs> you got to know. So he's back, to me me. and he goes, he just sat down, he shook hands with this guy three times. I go, oh, it sounds like they're up to something. <laughs> I go, and we were, luckily we were finishing, and I was like, okay, I'm not going to, I'm going to finish, and I'm going to walk the fuck out of here. That's hilarious. Just get out of here, slick. He could could crush me. He he wouldn't. You would be able to talk to him. He's a lot more reasonable than people think he is, and especially now. Now he's not drinking anymore. Oh, really? Yeah, he's been off booze for, um, shit, I want to say many, many months now. Yeah, it's been quite a while. He has no drink, and he's just changed to his. He just realized he was losing his fucking mind. He was getting b- deplatformed. He was drinking a, a, like a bottle, bottle and a half of vodka every night. Yeah, he was going stressful hard. times. I can understand why people do shit like that. Well, when you and when you do drink that much, you do get psychotic. Like you, you start. You Dude, st- I love drinking, and I can't. I don't drink like I used to anymore because well, you get older too. You, your it body can't process me. it right anymore. I wake up the next day, I'm depressed. Yeah. Yep. I yep. love drinking martinis during a live show. I fucking ah, I was and the fuck, next day, like oh. next day, I'm like oh, everything's wrong, everything's bad. I'm this. But, but you know what? A lot of that is a lot of it is not just the alcohol. It's also the dehydration. 
Oh if yeah. You, if you yeah, if you just hydrate and take uh, a lot of electrolytes, and, you think? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You you can mitigate a lot of that stuff. Also, uh, glutathione. Glutathione can help your body process alcohol quicker. Glutathione. Glutathione. Yeah, it's an antioxidant. Super potent really? antioxidant. Yeah, it actually uh, your body produces it and it aids in the process of um, processing alcohol. I didn't know that. Yeah, it can help you a little bit. Give well, you a little boost. I did drink in Hawaii. I did have, I have my ties. You did those fucking my ties, man? I loved them. Yeah. I couldn't stop drinking them. They taste so good. Yeah, that's a problem when things are delicious, but yet yeah. also get you fucked Alcohol, up. Alcohol, yeah. yeah. But the, I wasn't driving anywhere. I didn't have to do anything, so it was all right. There was, used to be a place in um, West Palm Beach, the uh, Improv, and downstairs they had one of those uh, alcoholic uh, slurpy places. Oh, no. You know those things? Yes. And they taste fucking yes. delicious. And they had one of them called Call a Cab. <laughs> <laughs> And you would drink it, and it was like, I, I drank one on stage once, and by the end of the show, I was like, thank God the show ended the way it did, because I forgot how to talk. Really? Oh, my God, I was so sloshed. By the time the show was over, I was uh, one glass. I mean, one, like, it was like a big gulp-sized uh -huh. call a cab. I don't know how many drinks how many were shots in one. Were there, like seven a shots or something? Load. But it's like a giant mix, right? Yeah. So it's just like 7-Eleven Slurpees. <laughs> yes. It all comes sugar, out. Sugar, got a lot of sugar <laughs> in it. Oh, all sugar. Mm -hmm. But it tastes good. Mm -hmm. It tastes good, and you get fucked up. Yeah, I've never been that fucked up on stage. There was a time when I was uh, I was going through a phase where I dropped my pants on stage. Oh, you stopped doing that? I did. Yeah. People start to complain. Why? I don't know. I'm you like, this is little? the oldest comic gig in the fucking gig in the thing. This is the gag. You drop your pants. I, 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 I'm, <laughs> I'm Jerry Lewis. It's funny. Did you have underwear on? Yeah. Oh, okay. no. no yeah. Yeah, yeah. I had, I had Ari, underwear on. Ari pulls his hog out. Not anymore. I really? think he's scared. Now. Can you can you do that? Isn't that yeah, illegal? Yeah, you still kill, pull your hog out. He pulled his hog out at uh, Skankfest in New York. They had a you know Skankfest. I, I'm again not I'm not familiar. You got to get this in stuff. the loop. I did know. It, I'm out of it. Did it a few weeks ago. At did Kel, he? At Kel Tony, yeah. He pulled his hog out again. Yeah, right before he was here. Right before maybe Tony was here. One of the times. It Where was, was it? At main in, stage. In, yeah. Oh, in, in the comic store. store? Yeah, yeah. Well, probably shouldn't say that. That could probably be a well, problem. What was embarrassing? Illegal. Well, I used to do it, Joe. It's a fake rubber dick. Don't worry about it, folks. I used to do it. You used and, to pull your dick out? And yeah, and then nobody noticed that I was embarrassing. Oh, I get it. I get it. It's a joke. <laughs> yeah, Joe. Just sometimes I do jokes, all right? <laughs> I, I, you it's know, okay. What am I here? My father? No. It's okay. It's all fine. It's all fine. Ari uh, uh, has always done ridiculous shit. He used to go on stage with his balls out of his pants no, and not address it. Come on. So he'd go on stage and do his act. Come and what he would do is he would just unzip his pants, pull his sack out, and then just have it only a sack hanging out while he was on stage. Who did it at the store where there was like someone on stage Joey. doing the bombing and he, yeah, yeah. It was Joey behind him? There was the a person. woman on stage. She, she was terrible. Like one of the worst comics that's ever done comedy. And this one night she was killing. I mean, fucking killing. And this is why. When she would hit a punchline, Joey was hiding behind the stage and he was naked. And he'd go, ah! And then he would close the curtains. And so she would get this giant fucking laugh. And she was like, wow. <laughs> And you can see oh, her kind of wow. feeling her oats. And then she's like, and then I told him, fuck you. And I'm like, ah! No. <laughs> yes. yes. Balls ass naked. That, would, that seems cr like you could yeah. be in jail. That and seems criminal. Would Joey's balls look like grapefruit in an old lady's pantyhose? And he's got a giant dick. So Joey would, you know, Jesus. and he's got this huge belly. So he opens up the curtains. Oh, Jesus. His pants are down by his ankles. <laughs> his balls and his dick are hanging out. He's got this huge belly. Yeah. She never did comedy again. Really? No. I'm making that up. Oh, okay. She should have. There he is. <laughs> That's in Austin, actually. That was where we were at the hotel hanging out in the, there's Ari in the background. Yeah. <clears throat> hanging out at the uh, jacuzzi, getting ready for the show. Wow! Yeah, back I, that's, in the day, that I mean, uh, like comedies, uh, it's already dangerous enough. Yeah, <laughs> I don't need to add nudity. Well, you get in trouble now. For yes, things like that, like people can get really angry at you for showing your dick. Well, that could, <laughs> it's not not like the olden days. <laughs> it was kind of a, it was a subtle gag. It's a goof. People could see it. Yeah, it's a goof. I mean, nobody it's cared. Got, it's got his cock out. Yeah, and Joey used to do it all the time. Yeah, I don't. Uh, there was. Um, I remember when I was a kid, I had older sisters, and they there was a flasher in our neighborhood. Oh. And they would go home like, oh, the guy flat. I'm like, I don't understand this whole thing. 
I don't understand why he's doing that. I don't understand why it freaks you out so much. It's like, I don't, the whole thing, but now I, go, now I understand why it freaks them out. I get the freaking out. I still don't get why they do it, but I think it has something to do with someone traumatizing you when you're young. It's Yeah. yeah it's it's got to be humiliation, mm -hmm. something you're addicted to, that kind of, there's lots of people like that. Yeah. Well, how about guys who are addicted to, they hire women to gag them and shit on them and kick them in the balls and, yeah. and sometimes like really powerful men. And, and hurt them. Yeah. Yeah. Like hurt them. Stomp their nuts. Like stop on their nuts with a yeah. stiletto yes. and then it starts bleeding. Uh, How is that fun? How is that? What is that? I don't know. That is such Broken a, people. That is broke. So, so down a, a rabbit hole of Ugh. humility. I'm, you know... I mean, I was hit a lot as like I went to Catholic. I got all the guilt and hitting and yeah. and uh, somehow I managed to avoid that kind of that kind of shit. Well, I think God. that not is, that I don't have weird shit, but that's some mommy shit and like the whole pantyhose and beating you and kicking you in the balls. It's like there's obviously it's got to be your mom, right? Spectrum of pathologies that people can develop in their life, and there's probably a lot of mental illness involved in there and violence and abuse. But apparently, there's a, a woman that I talked to who's a dominatrix. And she was telling me and Jim Norton, you know, Jim yeah, Norton. Yeah, I know Jim. He, in a dominant, he loves dominatrix. And she was saying most of her clients are like these like wealthy CEOs and they run these companies and they're the fucking man. And when they walk in, oh, Mr. Wilson's here. Hello, Mr. Wilson, can I get you a cup of coffee? And everyone's kissing their ass and they want someone to shit on them, like literally shit on them. They want someone to tie yeah. them up. And she, yeah, she would say that those are the guys. It's Why always, is that though? I guess it's just... So every powerful guy wants to like feel a release of their power? Well, that's why when the- John the, Wayne the wanted steel, to be shit on? I don't get it. Maybe. The Steele dossier, right? When they were talking about yes. Trump getting peed on and all that stuff mm -hmm. or peeing on them. That's why it made sense. It's like, right. well, of course. Of course. Well, not that it's real. Not mm -hmm. that it made sense that it's real. But that would be a story because that you would kind thing. of expect from a super powerful guy who had a weird kink. Right. Super powerful guys with weird kinks, they usually want to get pegged. Right? They, they want to get pissed on. <laughs> Pegged. <laughs> Pegged is the best. That's one of the. That's one of the best things. Like, cause you could say pegged on national TV right now. Yes, it's still you can still say They're it. Pegged. No one can stop you. <laughs> right? Pegged is not like. It's not in the dictionary. Right. I don't think. Right. If you say butt fucked with a dildo, people go hey. hey. But you shouldn't even say that because it's too wordy. Yeah. Economy of words. Pegged fits better, and it's 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 got a P and a G. Pegged. How do you just not start laughing when the, when she starts pegging you? I don't know. How do you just not start laughing? You might be really into it, and then you're like, you gotta "Oh be. yes, I'm a bad boy." I don't get it. Well, I, 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 what, what do the women get out of it? They get to dominate you and That's fucking it? humiliate you. Yeah, I knew a guy, and this girl said that she would fuck him if uh, if she, if he let her peg him. And he, he wouldn't do it. We oh, were, really? We were, we were calling she him She wanted to do it. Yeah. Well, she said, uh, she goes, I'll let you fuck you. She goes, I'll let, let you me fuck you. me, but I, I want to fuck you in the ass. How with pretty was she? She's pretty hot. And all Tough. my friends called him gay. Well. Bro, you're gay. Hey. You should have just fucked her and let her <laughs> take you her You won't let ass. someone fuck you in the ass. You're gay. <laughs> and we, my friend, it was funny. He was like, it's not even a real dick, bro. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> There's no win there for this yeah, guy. Yeah, like, look, no she's win. hot, man. Yeah. <laughs> she probably doesn't want to fuck you, but she's willing to do it if you're willing to do something for her. She probably always wanted to peg a guy. <laughs> you got to make some sacrifices. Yes. That's like your joke about the the female version of uh, who wants to give you a job in Hollywood movie. Oh, Harvina Weinstein? Yeah. That's yeah. <laughs> like that. If Harvina Weinstein came to my son with a solid contract, <laughs> I'd be like, dude, you're going to be Batman. <laughs> Well, it's true. We were talking about that last night with R. Kelly. Like, the R. Kelly story is horrific, right? He's having sex with like, 15, 16 year old girls. But imagine if J. Lo had a bunch of 15 and 16 year old boys locked up in a house somewhere in Miami. She's making them all eat her ass and videotaping them. We would be laughing. We'd be, it's so funny. It's so different. It is a different thing. It's, men and women are different. They're, yeah. They're a different thing. And this idea that we're not different is so stupid. We're not math. You know, right. we're very different. Right. Yeah, but we're in denial of that because we work in these environments where men and women are side by side, 40 hours a week, and the, the, everybody's under a human resources fucking tight grip of behavior. And so everybody, guys act weird, and then men don't want their women mad at them, so they have to pretend that, yeah, these guys are assholes. This guy's a total pig. Yeah. You know, as a, as a male I feminist, I find that atrocious. You know who's not a male feminist? You know who you never find that's a male feminist? Gay guys. 
because they're not trying to fuck you. Okay, so they don't have to play some stupid game. They care about women more than they care about anything, and women's equality is the most important thing. No, they're trying to suck dick and butt fuck dudes. They're having a good time. <laughs> That's what they do. They're not. They're having a fun time with other gay guys. They don't give a fuck. They they don't want you to be victimized. But they're not going to go out of their way as a, as a male ally. That's all guys trying to fuck you. A hundred percent. It is 100 percent sneaky guys who can't figure out any other way to fuck. That they, that they pretend to be female allies or yeah, feminists? Yeah, male feminists. Male fe you can just well, be a nice person I'd who's got like good values and ethics and you want, things to, you want equality for all. But the idea that you're a male feminist, you come out, I'm a male feminist. Like just saying those words out of your fucking mouth. You're a sneaky <laughs> fuck. I know what you're doing. You're sneaky. So You're a gender traitor. So you're, t you're telling me... <laughs> That guys who say, I always thought feminism was just about treating women equally. That's because you're talking to too many liberals. What is it about? Well, it is about treating people equally if you feel that it's about treating people equally. But when you hear a man say that he's a male feminist, you're, you're, you're going so out on a limb. You're not just saying, you're, you, I'm all about treating people equally. You're labeling yourself. And you're labeling yourself in this sort of submissive, sort of, uh, you're, you're, you're giving in to this cultural wave. So let me just, can you, what is the definition of feminism? Is that okay if I can ask? Who the fuck knows? Right? I mean, he's going to look it up, right? I could ask Suri. I bet you she knows. Yeah, ask Suri. Okay, ready? We got to end this soon. Though. I know. Hey, Suri, what's the definition of feminism? Advo advocacy of women's rights on the basis of equality of the sexes. Boy, that's an open-ended statement right there. Equality of the sex is how? Weightlifting? <laughs> Making babies? There's the no advocacy of women's rights based on the equality of sexes. That is of the sexes. Well, I think you're equal, but you can be equal but different. Well, we're not math, right? right. We certainly should have equal rights. We, we certainly should have uh, just equal, be, the way people treat each other, just equal morals and ethics. Another definition of feminism, theory of political, economic, social equality of the sexes, organized activity on behalf of women's rights and interests. I mean, that th sounds like shit that you would agree with, Joe. Well, organized activity on behalf... This is going to take too long. Okay. Unfortunately, because it's three o'clock. Okay. But yeah, I agree with most of those things. What I don't agree with is someone labeling themselves that way that's a man, because everyone that I've ever met is a, a little weasel. Well, I'm... You know, I'm, I always say, show me a male feminist that can pick up heavy things and run fast. <laughs> They don't exist. <laughs> they don't exist. You would think George Clooney calls himself a feminist? Does he? Does I don't he know. Have to probably has to. I think he gets pegged. <laughs> yes. <laughs> but I, but I, like I, but I you, think it's Brad I like Pitt. how you look. Jesus Christ! <laughs> like yeah, I'm going in. <laughs> <laughs> Jimmy, I love you. We got to do this more often. Yes, I would Please. love to. Can we do this more often? It's always great to talk with it's you. It's always great to talk to you too. Tell everybody how to get to your show, all your your social media shit, everything. JimmyDoorComedy.com. We're on tour. We're going to be in Tempe, Miami, all over the place. Go to JimmyDoorComedy.com and you'll see everything. Always appreciate it, brother. Thank you so much. Thank you. Bye, you fucks.